a period of six months to give time to a substantive deputy president to be elected. And if that should have a cancer rise in the office of the deputy county governor, the county secretary acts as the deputy governor for a period of six months until substantive deputy governor is elected. And number four, the petition are there for praise that the Senate intervenes uh, in this matter and introduces amendments to the Constitution and other relevant laws to provide for one, a mechanism in which the office of the Deputy President and that of Deputy County Governor are directly elected into office. And number two, prayer number two, and by election in the office of the Deputy President after assumption to the office of President by an elected Deputy President. Number three, and by election in the office of the Deputy County Governor after assumption of the office of the County Governor by an elected Deputy Governor. And four, a mechanism by which the President has the power to appoint a Cabinet Secretary in an acting capacity to the office of the Deputy President in the event of a vacancy for a period of six months until a substantive Deputy President is elected. And prayer number five, the last one, a mechanism by which the County Governor has the power to appoint the County Secretary in the acting capacity to the office of Deputy Governor in the event of a vacancy for a period of six months until a substantive Deputy Governor is elected. Honorable Senator Fred, we are way to the nearest seat. They will conclude. So, Honorable Senators, pursuant to standing order 2 that 7, I shall now allow comments, observations, or clarifications in relation to the petition for not more than 30 minutes. But if you allow me, I can request the next petition by Senator Mwaruma to read it out, and then we can combine those comments. Senator Maruma. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I will read this petition on behalf of uh, the petitioners. We, the undersigned citizens of the Republic of Kenya, being the Kenya National Union of Teachers, Taita Taveta Branch, wish to present this petition to the Senate on behalf of all teachers who do not get hardship allowance in Taita Taveta County. We humbly draw the attention of the Senate to the following, that all Taita Taveta County teachers qualify to be paid hardship allowance as per legal notice number 534 of 1997 and as per the 13th July 2021 Collecting, collective bargaining agreement between Teacher Service Commission and Kenya National Union of Teachers and Kenya Union of Post-Primary Education Teachers and the Kenya Union of Special Needs Education Teachers Kusnet. Two, that despite the existence of Legal Notice 534 of 1997, and the 13th July 2021 Collective Bargaining Agreement, not all teachers working in Taita Taveta County benefit from hardship allowance. That Teacher Service Commission pays hardship allowance to teachers teaching in Voi and part of Matate sub-counties, leaving out the following areas. A, Taveta sub-county. B, Taita sub-county. C, Rongezon of Matate Subcounty, D. Bololo Secondary School and John Mark Manjuma Secondary School of Voi Subcounty. Four, that teachers in these areas need the allowance to cushion them against the following A. Insecurity caused by marauding wild animals from Savo National Park. B. High cost of water due to lack of clean water and drought. C. High cost of travel due to impassable roads 
occasional floods and duty to remoteness. D, high cost of housing due to lack of rental houses within the vicinity of the schools. E, too much work caused by understaffing. F, high cost of medical care due to unavailability of medical facilities. G, high communication costs due to poor network coverage. Five, that there is no justification to discriminately pay hardship allowance to some areas in Taita Taveta County and leave out others since these areas have comparatively similar characteristics in terms of climate, topography, security situation, and availability of social amenities. Six, that it is surprising that some of the most marginalized areas in the county, like Ronge Zone in Matate Subcounty, Kishushe in Taita Subcounty, and Chala in Taveta Subcounty, are denied hardship allowance while others are getting. Seven, that unlike TSC, the Commission on Revenue Allocation identified Chalawad in Taveta Subcounty as the most marginalized area in Taveta, Taveta County to benefit from equalization fund. Eight, that teachers are reluctant to take up teaching positions in areas that are not entitled to hardship allowances and thus causing staffing problems which has adversely affected performance and general development of these areas. Nine, that teacher service commission fail, commission's failure to pay hardship allowance to teachers working in Taita or Interveta, Interveta and Wundani sub-counties amounts to discrimination and unfair remuneration and thus contravening Article 27 and Article 41 of the Constitution of Kenya. Ten, that Kenya National Union of Teachers officials and other leaders have made every effort to resolve the matters raised in this petition without success. Eleven, that there is no case pending in a court of law, constitutional or any other legal body on the matters raised in this petition. Here are for your humble petitioners pray that the Senate, through the relevant committee one, investigates and finds that Teachers Service Commission sele Commission's selective payment of hardship allowance to some teachers in Taita Taveta County and leaving out others is unjustified and discriminatory. <laughs> Two, recommends that Teacher Service Commission pays hardship allowance to all teachers working in Taita Taveta County without any further discrimination. Three, takes any other appropriate action it deems fit and your petitioners will ever pray. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Senator Maruma. Honorable Senators, before I give you the 30 minutes window, I want to honor members. Senator Murango. And who is this senator on the floor? <laughs> Honorable Senators, we have a visiting delegation from the County Assembly of Viga. Honorable Senators, I would like to acknowledge the presence in the speakers gathered this afternoon, a visiting delegation from the County Assembly of Viga, comprising members of the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee and its Secretariat. The delegation is undertaking a benchmarking visit with their counterpart in the Senate. Honorable Senators, I request each member of the delegation to stand when called out so that you may be acknowledged in the Senate tradition. Uh, Honorable Eren Mwanika, Chairperson of the Committee. Honorable Richard Muhiga, Vice Chairperson. Honorable Wimsi Osore, Member. 
Honorable Patrick Kigumba member, Honorable David Ojiri member, Honorable Rita Atieno member, Honorable Helam Esipira member, Honorable Grandis Yalwala member, Honorable Fela Ajega member. Then we have the following Rogers Homuhuma, Obuhuma, Committee Clerk, Aston Emire, Researcher, John Kibisu, Senior Sergeant at Arms, and Daisy Nyandiko, Ansand. Honorable Senators, in addition to tradition of receiving and welcoming visitors to Parliament, I extend a warm welcome to the delegation. And on behalf of the Senate, and on my own behalf, wish them a fruitful visit. I thank you. Senator, for Viga County, two minutes, just to acknowledge and welcome the, your visitors. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to welcome the Honorable MCS from my county of Viga, who are uh, in this Senate for benchmarking. Mr. Speaker, this morning we had a very wonderful meeting with the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee where we exchanged a lot of uh, information with the Honorable MCS from Vega. I think this kind of uh, thing needs to be strengthened between the Senate and our county assemblies. I know all the members who are here representing various wards in Vihiga County, we have encouraged them to continue with their good work of oversight to oversight the county executive of Vihiga. And uh, as you know, the MCS play an important role of uh, primary oversight. So I call upon this Senate. We have a number of issues which are pending before us, one of the, it being the unresolved uh, issue with the SRC. I want to call upon this Senate, the relevant committees which are handling this matter, to handle it with speed so that our leaders who represent us in the wards are empowered to perform their, their role of oversight. Otherwise, Honorable MCS, welcome. And I'm also pleased to note that... Uh, the MCS were conducted around by one of a great personality from Vihiga County, who is now our staff, and that is uh, Colin Zengera, who is the most prolific rugby player of our time. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable MCS, and welcome, and learn more, and apply what you learn in your oversight role in Vihiga County, which I think requires more oversight than ever before. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I want to use my own discretion to allow the, the chair of the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee of the Senate, because that committee is a committee on justice and legal affairs of Vega County. Now, Chairman Jaylak, can you welcome these other, your counterparts? from the County Assembly of Iga. Senator Sigei Wakiri. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Uh, indeed, I, I, I press the intervention part on when you asked the Honorable Senator Sotsi to welcome his guests or other visitors. Indeed, the team led by Honorable Monica Helen from uh, the Vihika County Assembly were my guests and my committee in the morning. And uh, we welcomed Senator Sotsi as a friend to the committee. And so I want to appreciate him for creating time in the morning to join us. And more importantly, to thank the team from the Hika County Assembly for the great experience that we shared in the morning. Uh, Honorable Speaker, earlier on uh, in the last session, we had a number of county assemblies that came in and uh, it was quite surprising that a number of them did not have uh, justice and legal affairs committees in the assemblies, but this particular county assembly had their team 
working closely with the mandate that JLAC in the Senate and JLAC at the level of the County Assembly is uh, mandated to do. And we indeed, as Osoti said, shared quite a lot of uh, 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 programs which we can uh, you know, engage and also support both at the county level in order to make sure that we enhance the protection of devolution of, uh, and, and the functions of devolution. And I want to encourage them to take home the experiences that we shared in the morning. And uh, Honorable Speaker, we shared a number of uh, very uh, good experiences that they have had in their guest in Justice and Legal Affairs Committee. I wish them the best as they enjoy their experience and learning uh, in the Senate. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair uh, Jailak. Now we go to the 30 minutes we do for the petitions, comments on the petitions. And if uh, we don't need to utilize the 30 minutes, if we can use even 20 or so, it will be okay. I want to today give the leadership of the House the first priority. I understand with the Senator Olekina Rendama, Minority Whip. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to support the two petitions. And I will start by supporting the petition by Sen which has been read by Senator Maruma. Mr. Speaker, in this country today, our teachers are suffering. In fact, I've been agonizing on what to do, either to bring another petition here because of the welfare of the teachers. We have over 30,000 teachers who have died, and they have not been compensated as per the law. Their families have not been compensated. We pass laws in this country, in this house. We have the PSSS Act, which we pass to ensure that there is personal liability or you know, uh, disability. But the teachers are never compensated. Now, we have a crisis where, in fact, everybody has been talking about the challenges that the teachers go through in Northeastern. The teachers have been crying to the Teacher Service Commission and say, transfer us there. Today, we have another challenge of teachers who are living in very dilapidated hardship areas like Taita Taveta and also Naro County, Mr. Speaker. These teachers are the ones who are responsible for us to be here. We don't care about our teachers. Mr. Speaker, it's about time that this House prioritize these teachers. Whenever I go back to my rural area and I meet people who taught me, persons who I believe are the ones who contributed to me being here, I feel very sorry for them. So I want to support this petition and I hope that when the committee is going to be looking at this, we, cannot, we can extend it to other parts of this country, Naro County, Kajiado County, Lamu County, Garissa County, Kitui, you know, we just have to be realistic. You know, Mr. Speaker, in a few years' time, and I like because everybody is aware of this, in a hundred years, none of us will be here. In 50 years, maybe most of us will not be here, we'll be gone, and in a hundred years we'll be forgotten. Can we do something that at least maybe the future generation will think about us? And they'll say they supported my great-grandmother, who was a teacher, who was living, who could not be able to get a house, who, could not, who would trek, use a motorbike to go to school, to be able to make sure that we have leaders in this country. So, Mr. Speaker, I support that, and I, and I want to really call upon the Teacher Service Commission. If there, there is an agreement that you've passed, why not commit to it? Why are we having this bad behavior where we are quick to sign a covenant, but then we are very fast in running away from it? So this petition, I fully support. Now I go to the second petition, which is of paramount importance. A few years ago, Mr. Speaker, we had a very interesting situation in this country, Nairobi County, when the former governor, Mike Movisonko, was impeached by this house. In fact, I'll go on record and saying I did not impeach Sonko. And one of the, some of the challenges that we faced 
why well Sonko was impeached is that by the time Sonko was impeached, his deputy, whom he had chosen as per the constitution, had resigned. There was no law. But then we referred back to the law and we started thinking what the framers of the constitution had in mind when they say that the person to be elected has got to choose someone to be his running mate or her running mate. What we forgot is that the people we represent in this house do not only vote for a, a, a governor, they look at the entire team. So I think this amendment or proposal or petition is something worth looking, looking at. I think it will, may require a, um, a referendum. But it's something worth for us to be able to debate. We have the issues of the deputy governors as well. We have the issues of the deputy, deputy president. It is very interesting because when you, look, when you read the Constitution, one of the qualifications for a person to be able to serve as a deputy governor or deputy president is that he or she must have the qualification to be elected as a governor. But there's an interesting thing here, which I think is something that we need to discuss. The petition introduces something saying, with the way we are dealing with issues currently, we get somebody who is not popular. So are we electing people who are popular, or are we electing people who the Constitution said they can qualify to become elected as either president or governor? So I think it's important. I don't necessarily maybe agree with the suggestions that um, the petitioner is suggesting, that maybe a, a, a governor nominates a county secretary, or the president nominates a cabinet secretary, but these are things which we can legislate on, we can discuss, and it has come at the, be at the very good time, Mr. Speaker, when we are talking about the national dialogue. You know, the committee which is led by, on our side, by the Honorable Kalonzo Musioka, and on the other side, by Kimani Ichungwa, the majority leader of the National Assembly, is calling upon people. Maybe it is time that this petitioner also submit his views in that national dialogue. If we are talking about fixing this country for future generations, not for us. You know, Mr. Speaker, we can spend all the time accumulating all the wealth. But I just want to remind us that we are only here for a very short time. So, Mr. Speaker, I support these petitions, both of them, for us to think about the future, not about us. Let's think about the future. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Senators, you know we risk the 30 minutes to be utilized by two, three members. So I want to give further direction that every member should take two minutes maximum just to make a comment. This is not a debate, but just a comment. Senator Chalgay Samson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, I want from the onset to support the and petition. Today, what is the problem with your eyesight? No, I've been seeing wonderful things that the president has done until it has shocked my eyes, but I'm recovering. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I wanted to support uh, the, the petition by Senator Johannes Maruma over the hardship allowance, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, even us in Nandi County, many people assume that uh, we are in a, a land of canon of honey and milk. But when you go to some areas like uh, Terik Ward in Aldai, some areas in Tindred, and some areas in Masop, the so speaker, we also need hardship allowances. So it doesn't mean that uh, Taita alone, I think most of the part of the country, Mr. Speaker, is to have an opportunity of ensuring that we get hardship allowance and ensure that our teachers, Mr. Speaker. I think the biggest enemy of teachers in this country is Teacher Service Commission. We have had insistent complaints of non-payment to teachers who retired in 1997. Mr. Speaker, we saw teachers embarrassingly standing at TSC because their lives are in danger in northern part of Kenya, where daily they are being butchered and massacred and killed, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I think it's the high time that TSC does their job. And in fact, there is a proposal that they are being floated around, Mr. Speaker. For example, Judicial Service Commission the chairperson of JSC is Chief Justice Mata Kome. Why don't we have uh, one of the union leaders of this organization of teachers being the chairperson of TSC or CEO of TSC 
so that they understand. They say in where, uh, where uh, Muhammad Fake comes, comes from, Mr. Speaker, kikulacho kingu ni mwako, kiko ndani ya nguo yako mweshimiwa. Mr. Speaker, they say kikulacho kingu ni mwako, aigwezi kukuramba, Mr. Speaker, so we need somebody who is part of it so that the mess, Mr. Speaker, can be sorted out. Finally, Mr. Speaker, on the issue of uh, the petition on election and uh, uh, of deputy governors and uh, uh, deputy president, I think those are issues that will go to popular initiative and referendum. I think the justice and legal affairs should not waste their time because those are things that will end up in popular initiative, Mr. Speaker. To allow my colleagues to add on this petition, allow me to rest there and thank you, and I support both petitions. Uh, next is Senator Manzo Daniel. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me an opportunity to comment on the two petitions. Mr. Speaker, on the answer, I support the two petitions. But I want to say that on the one dealing with the Deputy President and uh, dealing with the uh, Deputy Governor, Mr. Speaker, that uh, can only go to a referendum. And although it's, it's, it's a good suggestion to this House, uh, probably it is also be forwarded to, uh, you, you, you know, the, the, the committee dealing with the bipartisan issues. It is one of the sensitive issues because uh, from the case of Governor Songo, the former Governor of Nairobi, Immediately there was a vacant, there was a very big problem on how to refill it, and, uh, and, and by refilling it, there was quite um, a system. The, the way the two systems work, Mr. Speaker, is that the Assembly has now to elect a new deputy, and in the case of a deputy president, it is the, the uh, Parliament has to elect uh, a, new, a, a new deputy president. Uh, and I think that doesn't go back to the people, but to the representatives of the people. Therefore, it's a matter which needs... Uh, to, be, to be dealt with by all Kenyans in accordance with the current constitution. On the issue of the teachers uh, of, um, uh, and hardship allowance, Mr. Speaker, it is very, very nasty for a teacher to be sent in a hardship area where they have to, 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 you know, to, to, to pass elephants while going to teach. And in fact, the school they teach at, there are, there are, there are no facilities near there they have to travel. Uh, and uh, that's not only happening in uh, Taita Taveta, it is also happening in other parts of the country, including Makweni. And therefore, it is a matter which uh, we should take seriously, and it's a matter which we need to summon TSE here to this house, and probably the Minister of Education, Mr. Speaker, so that, the, 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 that, that when a teacher is doing their work, they should feel, love it, they should feel free that they are doing it, and they should feel sufficiently compensated for any hardships they are going through. Teachers have been killed by elephants, and they have not been compensated up to date while they are on duty. Teachers have been killed in bad tree areas, and they have not been compensated up to today. Their families have been left to suffer. And therefore, uh, it's a high time we rose to protect our teachers and made sure that this hardship allowance is availed with immediate effect so that our teachers who are very important can educate our children with freedom and give them the best so that they can have a future like ourselves. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, I support. Okay, thank you, Senator William Kipkemoi Kisan. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I arise to support the petition by the Senator from Taita Taveta. Honorable Speaker, it is unfortunate that uh, some teachers in that county get uh, archive allowance and others don't get. You know, it's basically a discrimination because what the Senator has enumerated, I mean, so many things, the place is hardship, basically semi-arid. Uh, there are many wild animals going through wild animals there. The roads are bad. There is no water. And they have water they supply to counties in the coast, Mombasa, Kilivi, and Kwale, and themselves, they don't have water. So these teachers are suffering. They deserve to be given hardship. And it's not uh, basically, uh, Honorable Speaker, Taita uh, Tabet alone, many parts of the country, as uh, my colleague has said, Makweni County, Kitui, Narok, and many others. So TSC and the other ministries and departments, they need to sit down, map out the country, and those who deserve to be given hardship allowance, they get hardship allowance, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Speaker, on the first petition, 
that came uh, through your office about the deputy president and the deputy governors, I believe, uh, Honorable Speaker, we should not waste time on that particular petition. It should go to by the, the dialogue committee because it's a referendum issue. When you are campaigning as a president with a running mate or a governor, you get somebody that you can work with. Senator Ososi. That is going to look into this, which is education committee, to not only look at the challenges teachers are facing in Taita Taveta, but also look at the entire 47 counties, because this problem is common in uh, many counties. But at the same time, Mr. Speaker, even as we are talking about uh, hardship allowances for teachers, I think we also need to ask for uh, the review of the criteria in identifying hardship areas uh, because we have areas which clearly are difficult areas to stay in but they are not listed as hardship areas and yet we have teachers who are supposed to work there. I think those two issues can go together so that the committee can look at the criteria of listing uh, places as hardship areas. In my county uh, we do not have any area that is listed as a hardship area. And yet, clearly, Mr. Speaker, I can tell you there are some areas which are uh, very difficult to stay in, in Vihiga County. And uh, we don't even uh, qualify for equalization fund. So the criteria for determination of all these things, Mr. Speaker, is also key, so that uh, we do not uh, uh, discriminate teachers who deserve to be given uh, hardship allowance. On the second issue, Mr. Speaker, a request for the constitutional amendment, I want to agree with colleagues that uh, I think is now a constitutional moment because this constitution has been in place for about 12 years now and uh, the, there is increasing request for constitutional amendment. I think it's a high time that this country sat down and re looked at this constitution, what is working and what is not working. For example, Mr. Speaker, this idea of deputy governor, if you ask me, Mr. Speaker, I would say that uh, governors don't really need a deputy governor. Yeah, because when there is a vacancy in the office of the governor, people should go to the, an election so that we don't have a scenario where someone comes into office as a deputy governor and then something happens to the governor, he's not there, then this man becomes governor, and he has not been elected by the people. So this is a very serious matter, which this committee of JLAC should look into. Your time is up. Senator James Kamau, Morango. Asante sana, Mr. Speaker. Mimi ningetaka kuunga mkono, Mkono mswanda ambao uliletwa na shemeji yangu Johannes Mwaruma, Senita wa Taita Taveta. Mustaik speaker, shida ambao iko ya walimu, ambao wapewi pesa ambazo wanafaa kupewa wenye wanafunza katika maeneo magumu, nadhani ni swara ninyeti kwa, kwa sababu kama semu nilio toka kirinyaga, ni kwamba imekuwa shinda kubwa kwamba hata watoto ambao wanafaa kwenda katika shule katika eneo la Mwea. Samani kidogo seneta wa Kirenyaga. Nini swara yako ni ipi ososi Godfrey seneta wa Viga. Oja ni damu yako ni kuhusu nini? Mr. Speaker, you know this is a house of order and rules. And the substantive speaker made a ruling on the dressing in this chamber and it is allowed the short sleeved uh, uh, in this house. My good friend, the senator for Kiri, Kirinyaga, is putting on a short sleeved uh, jacket. Is he in order, Mr. Speaker? Okay, okay. Uh, I'm reliably informed that uh, the senator for Kirenyaga has been around to wear that wing because of some other reasons. 
proceed Mustaki speaker ningeomba senator Viga hawe anakuja katika ikikao ili kujua mambo yanavyoendelea Mustaki speaker kwa sababu hilo jambo lilitatuliwa kitambo sana na kwa sababu ya hiyo kwa sababu sana sana mheshimiwa speaker anakuja na itirafiana na mtiririko wa mawazo nikija kurudia chenye nataka kurudia asha ni haribia nilikuwa nasema kwamba katika Kirinyara kuna hoja zingine mbili za nidhamu kuhusu sijui ni nguo ni ile sare umevaa ama ni sijui ni kwani samani tu dakika moja tena senator sifuna honorable speaker it is important that when you give such direction you make it clear under what provision of the law he has been allowed to dress like that because there are no rules for specific or individual senators the rules that are applied that apply to all of us so that uh, if if there is some uh, unique understanding or reason, some, uh, then we should know so that i also go and save uh, money on material instead of bringing a full sleeve i can wear half senator sifuna you know when i don't disclose some matters some some of the issues are private and that is why i did not disclose as a professional, I did not try to, to say the reason, but I said there is genuine reason that was given by the speaker to wear that way. I don't need to disclose whether maybe he has itchy arms or he has some problems in his body. So when the speaker gives direction, you just, uh, you just go by my direction kindly. So you out of order, Senator Sifuna. Senator Boni, also you had another point of order. Mr. Speaker, we cannot forever be wasting the time of this House on issue of dress code. Mr. Speaker, having pronounced yourself that there is a special circumstance that allows not just Senator Murangu but any other senator to enjoy that exception, then in the same breath, just clarify which that condition it is, so that should it be that Senator Sifuna has a similar condition, he can stand guided, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> now proceed and conclude, country. Hey. Mr. Speaker, now to keep the live with Ambindi when Gina to talk and go heavy hilly, could he reach a shield as a young to Konazo? I am Mustafa. 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 Speaker. Siwezi toa nguo ni kiambiwa na mweshimiwa asifuna ni toa. Kwa zaobu ni mwanaume kama mimi. Mustafa. Speaker. Nilikuwa nasema kwa mba zile shinda ambaso tuko nazo katika eneo na kirinyaga pia. Zina ambatana na mswanda bome ya umeleto katika mbunge hili. Na shemeji yangu. Senita wataita taveta Johannes Mwaruma. Kwa sababu unaona ya kwamba ukienda katika mpaka kirinyaga na embu ambako walimu katika mazingira ambayo yanayofanana wengine wanapewa pesa za ziada kwa sababu ya mazingira magumu na wengine hawapewi ukiangalia kama ni mambo na lishe ya watoto wa shule za chekechea watoto wengi kutoka eneo la kirinyaga wanabindi wavuke pande ile ingine kwa sababu kuna lishe na ili hali kirinyaga mazingira ni yale yale kwa hivyo ningeuliza ya kwamba mambo kama yale yaweze kuzingatiwa kwa njia inaofaa ili kuhakikisha kwamba kuna usawa katika wale walimu wanafunza katika maeneo yale ili walimu wasihame ili wapate ama wapate mazingira ambao ni mazuri zaidi na wanatolekea wanatolokea maeneo mengine wanakoza kufundisha kwa sababu ya pesa za zianda kwa hivyo kwa mustahiki speaker nitakomea hapo na niseme kama kuna mtu ambaye anashinda zaidi anione kando nitamuelezea kwa nini niko namna hii asante sana mustahiki speaker asante Senator Abu Enoch, Deputy Minority Linda. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to comment on the petition uh, concerning our teachers and our hardship allowances. Mr. Speaker, I think a time is now ripe that this country must come up with a proper policy framework on which areas are classified as hardship areas and which areas are not. Because the speaker, it's actually a shame that there are some areas in this country which under the equalization uh, fund, they qualify for the fund because they are considered marginalized 
and therefore hardship areas. But when it comes to the issuance of hardship allowances to teachers and civil servants working in those areas, they don't qualify. And so there is need to harmonize the two. And, and I'm happy because we have that, that bill before us that we must insist that the uh, CRA, working with senators and perhaps county governors, uh, come up with a formula of determining which areas in this country are marginalized and therefore they are hardship areas where civil servants and teachers uh, qualify for that allowance. The speaker, I thank the petitioners led by the senator for uh, Taylor Taveta for bringing up that matter because the matter that is live in my county in Kitui, we need that matter harmonized for the teachers and the civil servants. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Wakir Hirali, Kiprotich. Uh, I thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to contribute also to these two petitions. First, let me commend uh, the Honorable Senator Maruma for the petition, which uh, speaks to the interest of the teachers. Uh, indeed, it's time, uh, Honorable Speaker, that the current policy as is that deals with areas where the Teachers Service Commission has designated as hardship areas be reviewed. Um, it, it's not that, uh, Honorable Speaker, that uh, out of the very many uh, uh, areas which have already been earmarked, it only reflects a small section of the known areas that generally benefit from uh, the Equalization Fund, which has, uh, according to the statistics given, benefited uh, by virtue of devolution. Indeed, what was laid out in the petition by Honorable Maruma speaks to the volume and speaks to the challenges that a good number of teachers, not only in the particular county that has been referred to in the petition, but across the country. It is true that um, we still have a long way to go in terms of equitable uh, benefit to our employees in the, the Teacher Service Commission because of skewed uh, marginalization and benefits that comes with areas designated. For instance, in my county, Honorable Speaker, there are three areas within Chepalunku constituency that directly benefits from the equalization fund. Three, these three words, the words Sigor, Nyangores, and, 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 and Chebuno, directly benefit out of the equalization fund. Why? Because they are earmarked as areas that are hardship. And when we define hardship, uh, Mr. Speaker, it is exactly the nine or so listed challenges that such employees face while they are seeking to deliver the services to the people of Kenya. And so I supported the petition. And once that petition is assigned to a particular committee, I request such a committee to expand it in order not only to deal with the specific area where Honorable Senator Maruma has petitioned, but across the country so that in its resolution it expands to the whole country so that we speak to the challenges of all the teachers. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, the second petition, I support to the extent that we indeed need to amend the provisions of the law that deals with the roles and elections of uh, the deputy governors and uh, such other offices. However, that is a constitutional amendment that I know will require a referendum and therefore a committee cannot necessarily deal with such a petition to its conclusion other than making recommendations for purposes of uh, maybe advancing it to the, the National Dialogue Committee or enhancing it beyond that to deal with it as a popular initiative towards amendment to the Constitution. I therefore, Mr. Speaker, support the two petitions and I thank you. Uh, Honorable Senators, I would like to acknowledge the presence in the public gallery this afternoon visiting teachers and students from my Mayu Boys High School. The group comprises uh, three teachers and 41 students who are in the Senate for a one-day academic exposition. Honorable Senators, in our issue tradition of receiving and welcoming visitors to Parliament, I extend a warm welcome to them and on behalf of the Senate and on my own behalf, wish them a fruitful visit. Thank you.
My, my, am I convinced that it is in Nakuru County? Yes, Senator for Nakuru County. Thank you. Senator Tabida Kiloche. Asante. Asante, Asante. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. I want to take this opportunity and welcome the Maimahio Secondary School. Uh, it's a very uh, good school, and it's a very good school. I want to use the opportunity and uh, assure them that being here will add a lot of value to them. So take the, all the advantage and ensure that when you're here, you go also to the national, uh, I mean, uh, I mean the, the national, or the parliament, the other national house, so that now yeah, you can get all that you, you, you need to get, so that you, whatever. I'm looking forward to having you as the future senators of the Nakuru County. Thank you. When you go home, Salimia Kilamutu. Asante ni sana. Tukua moja. Senator Kiroche, maybe there is another my high, my, my, my secondary school. This is school are the boys, wonderful boys from my Mayu Boys High School. High School. Yes. So they should be recognized as they are. Thank you. No, don't, don't mind. It was on a right touch. Uh, let us have now Senator Beatrice Ogora. My 30 minutes almost now done. We go to the next order. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, for granting me the opportunity to support the petition by uh, the Senator of uh, Taita Taveta. Honorable Speaker, teachers remain the most uh, discriminated lot of professionals in this country. If it is not over the hardship allowance we are talking about, it is about their transfers. And Honorable Speaker, it is important to note that even when there's a legal notice that spells out that the whole county should uh, be given hardship allowance, then the Teacher Service Commission decides which sub-counties to give the allowance and which other sub-counties should be denied the allowance. Honorable Speaker, it is also important that we remind ourselves of some of the basic work that teachers do in schools. That other than teaching, teachers are nurses, uh, teachers are lawyers, teachers are judges, teachers, nurses, students and pupils. Teachers are caregivers and teachers are everything uh, to pupils and uh, students as they grow up. Honorable Speaker, it is because of teachers that we are seated here today. Bear with me, Honorable Speaker, that I want to say teachers, actually all teachers deserve hardship allowance. And uh, respective of their ge geographical situations, which is often looked at, Honorable Speaker, look at even the teachers who taught, for example, Senator Boni Alwali, Senator Gloria Ruoba, Senator Sifuna, if at all they went to school. Such teachers actually deserve hardship Allowance, Honorable Speaker. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, as I wind up, as I wind up, Honorable Speaker, I also want to comment on the first petition on the election of Deputy Governors and Deputy President. That, Honorable Speaker, in leadership there must be centers of power, there must be a hierarchy, there must be order in leadership. Take the present uh, uh, situation, Honorable Speaker, that His Excellency the President is in New York and governors are in New York for official duties. Such offices must be maintained sorry, sorry, by their sorry, deputies. Senator. Thank you. Okay, what is your point of order, Senator Matien? Okay, now you know you are, you are pressing the wrong button for intervention. Uh, let us have the last cylinder in this house, uh, Senator Sifuna. Have you made any request? Okay, if, okay. The last one from Senator Tobiko Pelis, the, the last member to contribute on this uh, order. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, um, 
Thank you for the opportunity. I was almost going to ask that uh, also some affirmative action like a hardship allowance is given to those to senators from those hardship areas and who are not getting an opportunity to speak in this house, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, I arise to support and to contribute to the, both the petitions, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the petitions about the functionality and um, uh, work and uh, about uh, for the deputy governors and those other offices. Mr. Speaker, it's a constitutional moment in this country. In fact, Mr. Speaker, JLAC and the other committees should take note that we have already gone beyond the uh, uh, you know, allowance in terms of the constitution for the review of elector, uh, electoral boundaries in this country, Mr. Speaker. And so it is high time that we get engaged in that debate. For the issue of teachers, Mr. Speaker, I do agree with Senator Mwaruma, who is uh, a neighbor, a neighboring county to Kajiado, that we suffer the same, uh, you know, hardships that our teachers um, uh, go through a lot, Mr. Speaker. We have schools in places like um, uh, my former constituency, uh, Kajiado East in Poka Kenyewa, around uh, Kiboko where actually even students cannot go to school because of, uh, you know, the elephants, the wildlife, and all that. Mr. Speaker, yet you find that Kajiado has been categorized as one of the, you know, uh, I think most comfortable in, uh, counties, so they are not put uh, in the hardship um, allowance for teachers just because of places like Kitengela, Rongai, and Gong that are neighboring Nairobi, and uh, hosting majority of the members here and those others who are working, um, you know, in the civil service. But there are places in Kajiado County, like Shombole, like Magadi, that are really, really hardship areas. And any teacher who is in those areas, Mr. Speaker, deserves hardship allowance, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, just like my sister uh, Beatrice has said, that uh, teachers do a lot of work. Teachers go beyond the call of duty. Teachers uh, do counseling. Teachers even speak to parents and, 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 and even do counsel parents, Mr. Speaker, because children come to school with all sorts of problems. Mr. Speaker, teachers should be paid allowances. I think all of them should be paid allowances, a responsibility allowance, because their work goes beyond the classroom. They, they, it goes into the communities. Mr. Speaker, teachers have become role models. Some of us came from communities that never knew the importance of educating uh, girls, we were supported by teachers throughout to be able to make it to the level that we are today, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I arise to support that all teachers should be given not just hardship but also responsibility allowance. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you, Honorable Senators. That we come to the end of uh, the 30 minutes uh, comments window for those two petitions. Honorable Senators, pursuant to standing order 231, the petitions should be committed to the relevant standing committees for consideration. In the case of the first petition by Talsisio Ireri Kawe, that the petition goes to the Committee on Justice, Legal Affairs, Legal Affairs Committee, and the second one by, to go to the Committee on Education. And in terms of standing on the 2 that 82, the committees are required in not more than 60 calendar days from the time of reading the prayer to respond to the petitioners by way of a report addressed to the petitioner and then to the table of the Senate. Thank you. Next on. Order number five, papers. Majority Rinda. Proceed, majority whip. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, sir, I beg to lay the following papers on the table of this Senate. Today, the 20th of September, Mr. Speaker, the year of our Lord, 2023. Being, Mr. Speaker, one, 
the architects and quantity surveyors amendment bylaws legal notice number 133 of 2023 and finally mr speaker the annual national government budget implementation review report by the office of the control of budget for the financial year 2022-2023 i lay and i thank you another paper by senator vice chair uh, devolution Uh, Honourable Speaker, sir, I beg to lay the following paper on the table of the Senate today, 20 September 2023, report of the Standing Committee on Devolution and Intergovernmental Relations on the application of the confinement of city status to the municipality of Eldoret. I beg to lay. Next order. Order number six. Notice of motion. Senator Baz, give notice of the motion. Um, Honorable Speaker, I beg to give notice of the following motion that the Senate adopts the report of the Standing Committee on Devolution and Intergovernmental Relations on the application for confirmation of city status to the municipality of Eldoret laid on the table of, of the Senate today, Wednesday, September 2023, um, uh, uh, pursuant to the Section 86 of the Urban Areas and Cities Act 2011, the, uh, the Senate approves the confirmation of the city status the municipality of Eldoret, shall pass the Standing Committee on Devolution and Intergovernmental Relations. Thank you, Speaker. Next order. Order number seven, questions and statements. Uh, we have statements and uh, standing on the 531. We start with the Senator for Viga County, Senator Ngoni Furiososi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I wish to request a statement on the status of construction of stadiums in Vega County. Mr. Speaker, sir, arise pursuant to Standing Order 53-1 to seek a statement from the Standing Committee on Roads, Transportation and Housing on the status of construction of stadiums in Vega County. In the statement, the committee should, one, provide an update on the current status of construction of stadiums in Vihiga County, indicating the, contractor, the contractors who won the awards, the total funds allocated to debt, the work done so far, the actual expenditure incurred to debt, the budgeted amounts in the current financial year of 2023-2024, and the reasons for the inordinate delay in completion. Number two, outline the measures put in place by the county government to expedite the completion of the stadiums for use by Vihiga-based teams participating in national leagues indicating the expected dates of completion of works on the stadium. And three, furnish the Senate with the original bills, Bill of Quantities, BQ, for the projects, stating any variations that may have occurred uh, this, this, uh, this the initial project's plan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The next statement is by the Senator for Meru, which is, stands defined to the next sitting. Uh, next is Senator for Nakuru County. You have two statements. In them simultaneously.
the request for a statement on the state of the health care in Akuru County. Mr. Speaker, sir, I rise pursuit to the Standing Order 53 to seek a statement from the Standing Committee on Health regarding the state of health care in Akuru County. In the statement, the committee should state the number and causes of infant deaths recorded across Nakuru County from September 2023 to date, particularly in Naivasha sub-county where there were recent reports of 25 infant deaths. Apprise the Senate on the capacity building programs undertaken by the healthcare workers in Nakuru County, indicating whether there are plans by the county government in partner with the national government on capacity building programs for specialized fields such as pediatric care, cancer treatment, and reproductive health, which may be too costly for the county to fund. State whether there are plans by the county government to employ additional health care workers to bridge the extent manpower shortage, indicating measures put in place to curb unlawful recruitment practices such as corruption and nepotism, and recommend measures to curb the, uh, to curb the attrition of health care workers and the deterioration of health care services in hospitals health care centers and dispensaries in the Nakuru County. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. There's a request for statement on and procedural dismissal of health care workers in Nakuru County. Mr. Speaker, sir, I rise pursuit on state to standing order 53 to seek a statement from the Standing Committee on Health regarding the procedural dismissal of health care workers in Nakuru County. In the statement, the committee should state the rationale behind the and procedural dismissal of well-trained and experienced health workers by the county government of Nakuru and their replacement with recent graduates and explain why the county government has not expunged the health workers from the duty roster and withheld their salaries for July and August 2023 in this regard of a court order restraining, restraining them, restating them. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. The next is uh, Senator Chelagay. Nani County, we also have uh, two statements. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. I rise pass one to standing order. Request for statement on construction of six interchanges on the Nairobi's Western Pipers. Mr. Speaker, sir, I rise pass one to standing order 53-1 to seek a statement from the Standing Committee of Roads, Transportation and Housing on the omission of construction of six interchanges on the Nairobi's Western Pipers. In the statement, Mr. Speaker, said the committee should, one, state the reasons behind the om omission of six interchanges from the original plan by China Road and Bridge Corporation for the Nairobi Western Pipers despite the initial approving. So, Speaker, said the second, Clarify the rationale behind dispersing the payment of Kenya shillings 21.5 billion to the contractor despite the contractor's failure to complete interchanges as initially intended through the BQ. So, Speaker, sir, state the measures put in place by the government to introduce junctions or interchanges along the Western Pipers to ensure accessibility for the densely populated areas situated along the road. And finally, Mr. Speaker, I light the steps taken by the government to all to account 
the officials involved in colluding with a contractor in payment of 21.5 billion, leading to the omission of interchanges. So, Speaker, the second statement, request for statement uh, on the status of rehabilitation and expansion of airports and airstrips in Kenya. So, Speaker, sir, I rise past one to standing order 53-1 to seek a statement from the Standing Committee on Roads, Transportation and Housing on the status of rehabilitation and expansion of airports and airstrips in Kenya. In the statement, the committee should, one, report on the progress made in rehabilitation and expansion of airports and airstrips in Kenya, highlighting the completion status of each project. Number two, Mr. Speaker, sir, provide the details of how the allocation of Kenya shillings one billion towards the airports and airstrips targeted for rehabilitation and expansion of airports and airstrips will be distributed across targeted projects and further state the feasibility of the entire projects. Mr. Speaker, sir, number three, indicate the total number of roads leading to and within the various airstrips scheduled for construction or renovation across the country. Mr. Speaker, number four, outline the number of counties that are set to benefit from the ongoing expansion, upgrading, and renovation of airports and airstrips across the country. So, Speaker, sir, finally, elucidate on the status of the expansion projects at Kisumu International Airport and Eldoret International Airports to support and handle uh, commercial flights and heavy uh, cargo operations within Kisumu International Airport and Eldoret International Airport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Senator Jonas Moruma. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity. Uh, Mr. Speaker, <coughs> I rise pursuant to Standing Order 53-1 to seek a statement from the Standing Committee on Education concerning the Taita Taveta County Revolving Education Fund by Higher Education Loans Board. Help. In the statement, the committee should, one, provide details of all applicants and beneficiaries of the fund, including the colleges they attend, admission numbers, the amount allocated to each, and disbursement debts from 2013 to date. Two, examine and table a report of any erroneous <coughs> recoveries for loans not issued, stating the measures in place to refund those who are wrongfully made to pay loans which were not issued to them. And three, investigate and report to the Senate any evidence of malpractice on the part of the fund committee or county employees detailing steps that will be taken against those found culpable. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Senator, um, you, next is Joseph Giduku, Senator Alamu. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Request for a statement on the status of health care provision in Peketoni sub-district, sub-county hospital in Lamu County. Mr. Speaker, I rise person to starting order 53, one, to seek a statement from the Standing Committee on Health regarding the status of health provision, healthcare provision in Peketoni Sub County Hospital in Lamu County. In the statement, the committee should one provide a comprehensive assessment of the equipment and facilities at Peketoni Sub County Hospital in Lamu County, indicating whether it meets the required standards for a level four, for a level four hospital in Kenya. Number two, state the current standing, state the current, the current staffing levels at the hospital, including the number of medical professionals, nurses, and support staff, explaining whether the staffing levels are adequate. Number three, outline measures put in place to ensure the hospital maintains 
an adequate stock of essential medicine to meet the prescription needs of patients, stating whether such measures have proven if effective. Mr. Speaker, uh, I still have under the standing order 53-1, I still have another statement on insecurity in Lamu County. Mr. Speaker, I rise person to standing, 53, standing order 53-1 to seek a statement from the Standing Committee on National Security, Defense and Foreign Relations regarding the, the insecurity situation in Lamu County. In the statement, the committee should, one, explain the current insecurity in Lamu County stems from historical injustices or is a sub consequence of terrorism activities specifically by Al-Shabaab. Number two, outline the measures the government has implemented to ensure the safety and security of Lamu County residents, stating the action undertaken to reset to individual displaced due to insecurity in the affected areas. Number three, confirm if any arrests have been made and perpetrators prosecuted for their actions. Number four, state whether funds, if any, have been allocated to compensate the victims of terrorism attacks in Lamu County, disclosing the budget allocated and criteria used in compensating the beneficiaries. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Next is uh, Senator Agnes Kavidu. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, request for statement on the incessant human wildlife conflict in Masinga Dam and all Donyo Sabuk game reserves in Machakos County. Mr. Speaker, sir, I arise pursuant to standing order 53-1 to seek a statement from the standing committee on land, environment, and natural resources regarding the incessant uh, attack by wild, wild animals uh, in Masinga Dam and Old Donyo Sabuk uh, Game Reserve in Machakos County. In the statement, the committee should, one, indicate the number of people living in the close proximity to Masinga Dam and Ole Donyo Sabuk Game Reserve injured or killed by crocodiles or hippopotamus and other wild animals. Two, explain the reason for the delay in fencing the dam and the game reserve by the government to avert the attacks to the residents. Three, outline measures put in place by the government to ensure proper safeguarding of all water reserves and world habit habitants uh, to protect residents from potential encounters with the wild animals and four, state compensation measures put in place for injured, uh, injuries sustained by the human and domestic animals, loss of human and domestic animal lives, uh, damage of crops, vegetation, and proper uh, result, uh, uh, and property resulting from uh, wildlife attacks. Senator Agnes Kavindu, MP, Senator for Machakos County. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, next is Senator Murango. No, no, no. Senator Karungo Dangwa. Senator for Kiambu County. Uh -huh, he's not allowed, so the that statement is dropped. Senator Mohamed Faki.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. I rise pursuant to standing order number 521 to make a statement on an issue of national concern, namely the circular issued by the Principal Secretary devolution in the office of the Deputy President on foreign travel for county governments. Mr. Speaker, sir, on 30th of June 2023, the Principal Secretary for devolution in the office of the Deputy President issued a circular entitled Policy of International Travels to all Governors and County Assembly assemblies employees in the country. In the policy, the principal secretary sought to provide for clearance to all county executives and county assembly employees traveling outside the country before their, their intended travel date. Pursuant to the said circular, the Office of the Controller of Budget has now stopped issuing any approvals for foreign travel to county executives and county assemblies without the, the, without the authority and approval from the Department of State Department of Devolution. Mr. Speaker, sir, this illegal procedure has created delays in processing of travels outside the country for county employees attending causes and important meetings outside the country, which are beneficial to the county governments. This bureaucracy has further curtailed budget implementation by county governments, which will impact on budget absorption at the end of the financial year, leading to unnecessary audit queries. This in turn negatively impacts the budget performance of our county governments. Mr. Speaker, sir, the clearance is personally issued by the Principal Secretary for Devolution, and the delays have on many occasions caused panic on the part of the county officials and in some instances necessitating payment of illegal inducements to fast track the issuance of the clearance. I'm told, Mr. Speaker, the, the payment is 5,000 per delegate who is traveling. This in turn opens up avenues for corruption. Mr. Speaker, sir, our constitution under Article 6.2 provides for two, dis two independent and distinct governments, one at the national level and the other one at the county level. Any oversight and accountability matters should be addressed by the respective assembly. I'm not aware of any provisions in law that allows the principal secretary for devolution to vet travels by officials of the county governments. This, in my humble opinion, is a grave violation of the Constitution and a usurpation of the powers of the county governments. The Senate should not remain silent when the county governments are being oppressed by the executive. Mr. Speaker, sir, I kindly urge the relevant committee to take interest in this statement as the circular has very grave repercussions on our county governments. Dated uh, the, the 20th of uh, September, 2023, Senator Mohamed Fakis, Senator County of Mombasa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, uh, okay, thank you, Senator Mohamed. Uh, there was one statement which I, and, uh, as, uh, I, I, I put that shouldn't be deferred to the next sitting, but uh, we can have it read under 531 by Senator Mutinda. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I do rise uh, to request for a statement on designation of Kenya Association of Bus Manufacturers as a conformity assessment provider. Mr. Speaker, uh, a person to standing order 53-1, I do seek a statement from the Standing Committee of Roads, Transportation and Housing regarding the possible conflict of interest arising from the designation of Kenya Association of Bus Manufacturers as a conformity assessment provider. In the statement, the committee should, one, state the criteria for accredit accreditation and designation of conformity assessment providers to the public service vehicle, body builders, bus body builders by the Kenya Accreditation Service and National Transport and Safety Authority and TSA, respectively. Explain how the Kenya Association of Bus Manufacturers was designated as a conformity assessment provider despite the potential conflict of interest that may arise as the membership of the association comprises of PSB, PSV bus body builders. Clarify whether there is a collusion between the association and PSV bus body builders for the body builders to deal exclusively with KABM to comprom compromise for the prescribed standards for the buses and stifle competition in violation of Section 21 of the Competition Authority Act 2010 and 
lastly, outline the measures put in place by NTSA and the Competition Authority of Kenya to ensure fair competition and discourage monopolistic practices where bus bodybuilders take all their business to KABM. Senator Kathuri Murungi, uh, MGH MP, Senator for Meru County. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Honorable S Senators, I would like to acknowledge the presence in the Speaker's Gallery. Uh, this afternoon, an officer from uh, the County Assembly of Ram, Ms. Consulata Maura, who is the crack assistant in the County Assembly of Ram. Uh, Ms. Consulata is in the Senate for a one week attachment. Honorable Senators, on behalf of the Senate and on my own behalf, I wish her uh, well during her attachment and in her future endeavors. Thank you. Honorable Senators, oh no, next order. Next order. Order number eight, <coughs> motion, adoption of the report of the Committee of Powers and Privileges on the inquiry on its own motion into conduct of Senator Gloria Oroba MP and to establish if the conduct constituted breach of parliamentary privilege. Honorable Senators, uh, this motion was stopped at some point and today we are, the, this motion is now live for debate. We proceed from where we left. So members who are ready to, to contribute. From my screen, I can see Senator Oso Singonfri. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to contribute uh, to this motion. Mr. Speaker, I want to start by thanking the Committee of Powers and Privilege for having taken the time to uh, listen to the various witnesses who appeared before them and uh, produce this report which they have brought to this House for discussion. But Mr. Speaker, uh, this particular motion calls for the adoption of the report of the committee um, on the conduct of one of us, who is uh, Senator Gloria Orioba, and establish if the conduct constituted a breach of parliamentary privilege. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, allow me to point out a few things uh, about our conduct as honorable members. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we are called honorable members because we are supposed to conduct ourselves in a honorable manner. And uh, when we get to a situation where we have to question the conduct of one of us, uh, I think it's important because it strengthens this Senate even more. Um, we have witnessed uh, instances in this house where some of us get worried that uh, maybe this house of senate is uh, is um, uh, uh, retarding in terms of uh, uh, being a house of honor uh, if you can remember mr speaker the first house uh, where my uh, senior Boni Haluale sat, we had very senior personalities sitting in this house. We had uh, people like James Orengo, we had Kiraitu Murungi, we had uh, Boni Haluale and others. And even the last uh, Senate again, uh, save for a few uh, senators, 
uh, we also had a very, very strong Senate. I think we need to look back to those days uh, so that we align our conduct to the conduct of uh, those two Senates that were there before us. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, this is a house of rules. This is a house of tradition. This is a house of norms. And all this is meant to make us work in an organized manner where we respect each other. Mr. Speaker, when I was uh, growing up, uh, when I was a student uh, at the university, I was one of the frequent visitors in the public gallery. And uh, those days when multi-party had just started, uh, one would imagine that these guys, if they meet in the chambers, they will fight each other or they will do something uh, out of this world. But th these members carried themselves with decorum. You can imagine a house that had uh, uh, Kenneth Matiba, a house that had uh, Jaramogi Odinga, uh, Raila Odinga, Mwai Kibaki, uh, even uh, former President Moi, Paul Muite, people who have very serious divergent views on matters of national importance. But when they came to the House, Mr. Speaker, they conducted themselves with the decorum, they followed the rules, and they respected each other. But we are beginning to see that scenario is quickly, quickly disappearing from uh, our houses. And uh, it should be a, a, a serious concern. It should be very serious concern. Mr. Speaker, this particular member, I happen to have sat in the same committee with this member. And this member sponsored a bill on Konza Metropolis, uh, Technopolis bill. And the committee tried its best. We gave our input. We had some reservations on a number of things. But this particular senator mistreated the members of the committee. At one point, she came to this floor and said that the committee is trying to kill her bill. And yet the bill was listed on the order paper. Mr. Speaker, I was not given an opportunity to appear before the Powers and Privilege Committee because I am among the members she accused of trying to kill the bill. And the only reason, Mr. Speaker, in the ICT committee, that the committee had a divergent view, was that the Ministry of ICT had the same bill, which was more comprehensive. And then we said, why can't we marry the two and have a bill so that your bill is not, uh, does not appear like uh, it is trying to compete with, the, with the, the, the ministry bill. But that alone unders that kind of disrespect from this Senate. Mr. Speaker, I am among the members who rejected this bill on this floor, largely because of that reason that that bill, one, it was insufficiently addressing the issues of how to manage uh, technopolis in this country. Number two, the ministry uh, of ICT was in the process of uh, processing a similar bill. So when it came here, I rejected that bill for that good reason. But this senator went on social media and labeled us as a community that is trying to fight her. Because my good Senator neighbor Halwale opposed it. My good Senator for Bungoma Wakoli opposed it. Just because we share the same tribe, she went 
and blackmailers on social media that we voted against the bill because we are lawyers. I voted against the bill, Mr. Speaker, because of the reasons I've stated. Mr. Speaker, we have also seen the kind of decorum that this senator has subjected our good clerk, Nyegenye, to. Nyegenye is one of the long-serving employees of parliament, Mr. Speaker. And I served in the National Assembly. And I worked very closely with Nyegenye. I know he's a very professional employee, very respectful. But now this senator comes up with allegations against the clerk, and the clerk has no voice. The clerk is supposed to keep quiet. Nyegenye deserves respect. Nyegenye deserves justice. And the justice is for us to pass this motion. Mr. Speaker, I support this motion because we must stop this kind of decorum in this house. We must bring back the respect of this house. We must also protect the staffers of parliament. These are professionals. These are not people who are in politics like us that we subject them to social media they have no avenue to defend themselves and then you use the privileges of this house to come and fight these innocent staffers. I want to say that uh, I will stand firm to support this motion even though some of us would be having alternative views. But even if you have alternative view, think about the Senate. Where are we heading to? For how long are we going to allow this kind of decorum in this house? And we have seen many other things in this Senate. Sometimes you sit here and you get shocked how some of our colleagues be behave. Mr. Speaker, I want to encourage members to support this motion so that it can serve as a lesson to those who want to do the same. Mr. Speaker, I served with you in the National Assembly. And we had similar cases. We had a case involving Babo Wino. There was no problem. We discussed it. And Babo Wino apologized to the House. And the matter ended there. We had a case on Didmas Baraza, the Honorable Member claimed that we were receiving money in the toilet, sugar money, and he could not prove it. And when he went to the Powers and Privilege Committee, they found out that he had a case to answer. The matter was discussed in the House, and the House agreed, and Honorable Baraza apologized to the House. There is no problem in us discussing this senator. All we want to from her is for her to come and apologize to the House, apologize to an innocent clerk that he blackmailed in social media, and we'll consider to accept the apology, and we move on. But we cannot stop discussing the conduct of a member just because we fear uh, some, uh, uh, some uh, issues. We will discuss and I encourage members to discuss this motion soberly and pass it so that we establish a, a precedent that members in this house will follow and we ensure that this Senate adheres to the established norms, cultures of parliament across the world. Mr. Speaker, I support. Senator Karen Nyamu. Um, Mr. Speaker, thank you for giving me this opportunity to contribute to this report tabled by the Committee of Powers and Privileges. And Mr. Speaker, 
we have seen this play out in the social media, in our social media platforms, our official WhatsApp group page between Senator Gloria, Gloria Oroba and the people alleged, namely the clerk and others. Mr. Speaker, we have also, I, also, I also happen to be in the committee that he's referring to, the committee for ICT, and I'm also privy to some of the alleged conduct by my colleague, Senator Gloria Oroba. Uh, but Mr. Speaker, I beg to differ with the report and state that not only is it very punitive to our colleague, Senator Gloria, it is also seems to be discriminatory because first of all, we are, discuss we are tabling this report and debating it in her absence, in the full knowledge of the Secretariat of the Senate and your office, Mr. Speaker, that she is away. We have also seen conduct that could be similar, if not worse, to what Senator Gloria is accused of. When we had, um, an, uh, when the, the minority side was having an altercation with Senator Dulo, we saw Senator Eddie get rough and, uh, dis and disorderly in the house. I have seen my colleague, Senator Sifuna, address the speaker and tell the speaker, shame on you to his face. Is it because Senator Gloria is a woman? <laughs> is it because that Senator Gloria is a woman that she has to go through this punitive. And don't get me wrong, Mr. Speaker. I am Senator for... Senator Spooner, you are next to contribute. I think you can combine all your issues at, uh, at that point. Mr. Speaker has, has, a has minute, uh, pronounced Senator himself. Carlin. And don't get me wrong, Mr. Speaker. I am for the, the role of the... Committee of Powers and Privileges. Just a minute. It's because I mentioned his name. That is why he, is, uh, he has the, the, the point of reply. So should he go ahead? Yes. Senator Spuna. Mr. Speaker, pursuant to standing order 120 on relevance, the matter that is before us is a report of the Powers and Privileges Committee on the conduct of a named senator. I would urge my sister to restrict herself to the contents of this report. It is a matter of record in this house that I have been punished severely for every crime that I have ever committed on this floor <laughs> so that nobody can bring that into this particular discussion. I have never been let scot free, not because of my sex or anything. I have been punished for all transgressions that have ever happened on this floor. And I don't see how relevant it is to the discussion before this house this afternoon. And also thank this, uh, of this chair because you have equally been pardoned severally for uh, mistakes. Mr. So, uh, Mr. Speaker, I also... I'm finished, but avoid and dragging the names of your colleagues on this matter and just, uh, just stick to your uh, issues. Okay, I am you guided. are doing so well before you start mentioning the I am guided. names of the members. And Mr. Speaker, I don't want to be, to be misunderstood. And don't get me wrong, I am for discipline of the members, I am for the Senate's respect, and I'm for order. But Mr. Speaker, we cannot banish a member for six months in this house because of maybe she did not express herself in a way that we expect, she did not um, conduct herself in a way that we all expected because we have we here we are different characters and as young people we can get overzealous and over enthusiastic so mr speaker even if we are to take action against senator gloria i am of the opinion that six months is too punitive it is unnecessary and if we are to adopt the report we adopt it with changes so that we minimize and we reduce that period where our colleague is supposedly supposed to be away from the house. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Edwin Sifuna. Mr. Speaker, 
uh, six years ago, uh, there's a famous black French footballer called uh, Benjamin Menti, who arrived at uh, the Manchester club called Manchester City as the most expensive defender at the time. Mr. Speaker, around November of 2020, this gentleman was arraigned in court and charged on six allegations of rape. At that particular point when those charges were brought against Benjamin Mendy, his career entirely stopped. His contract at Manchester City, of course, was put on hold. His bright future as a footballer was thrown into confusion. It was only in January of this year that that footballer called Mendy was cleared of those charges. Mr. Speaker, there are certain truths that we know in our society. There are certain crimes called crimes of morality. That in fact, Mr. Speaker, for as long as an allegation is made that you have been involved in a crime of morality, for instance, rape or defilement of a minor, the public already in their minds make a determination that you as a man are guilty. Mr. Speaker, there is also a tenet of law that the person who makes an allegation has the responsibility to prove that allegation. He who alleges must prove. Mr. Speaker, I have seen my colleague, the nominated senator from Nairobi, trying to make comparison to some of the things that have happened on this floor, to some of the allegations that have been leveled against members of the clerkship in this house by the senator under discussion, Senator Gloria Oroba. Mr. Speaker, this report is what we are supposed to restrict ourselves to this afternoon. Senator Gloria Oroba made very specific allegations that have been captured in this report, Mr. Speaker, and her responsibility, her sole responsibility, because we all have responsibility for the statements that we make and the allegations that we make. The first one, and this is found on page 8 of the report by the committee, is an allegation of pursuit of sexual favors in this house. Now, as I have told you, some of these allegations, especially for crimes of morality, immediately the allegation is made, especially to a man. Especially to a man. You are done. The society will not wait for the court case. They will not be interested in what the witnesses will come to say. In the minds of those people, you are a rapist once the allegation has been made. And that is the God honest truth. So, it is not to say that you cannot make an allegation. It is not to say that probably there are no people in this institution of parliament who are seeking sexual favors. That is not what we are saying. We are saying that immediately you pronounce that so and so is seeking sexual favors from you. You have a responsibility to substantiate those allegations. Number two, Mr. Speaker, the second count, there was an allegation of favoritism and discrimination in the execution of the work by the office of the clerk and officers of this uh, institution. Now, Mr. Speaker, all that is required to do after making an allegation, if indeed it is true, you, you must be able to demonstrate with evidence, in fact, that these are things that you have not just conjured up, that things are actually happening the way that you're putting them. Because these allegations once made against officers or any person in this house have consequences, Mr. Speaker. It is only fair that you make that substantiation. The third one, and all these are on page uh, eight, is an allegation of corruption that on diverse dates, she said that there were cases of corruption in parliament, posting various uh, messages on social media, that there are allegations of corruption. You know for a fact, Mr. Speaker, none of us here would survive an allegation of corruption if we are going to continue to be public servants in this republic. Now, I have had a conversation, and I had a conversation in this chamber with Senator Gloria, and I told her that in fact the beauty with our system is that there exists a mechanism through which you can demonstrate using evidence and facts that in fact these things are happening to you. And that was the invitation that came from uh, the Committee on Powers and Privileges. Mr. Speaker, what is most disheartening is that when you read this report, Senator Gloria Oroba, on two separate occasions, was invited to appear 
before the Committee on Powers and Privileges. Mr. Speaker, if you look at uh, uh, page 7 of that report, paragraph 12a, the first thing is the committee confirms here that Senator Gloria was given an opportunity to appear before the Powers and Privileges Committee, ostensibly to table evidence to back her claims of sexual favors, of corruption, and of favoritism in this particular house. Mr. Speaker, you can see that at paragraph 13, that matter, some of, that, uh, some of those uh, allegations that she had made were the subject of investigations by none other than the Directorate of Criminal Investigations. And at paragraph 13a, the report says that the evidence submitted was not enough to sustain a criminal charge in court. That is to tell you that the DCI had concluded their investigations and that they found the evidence that was provided not substantive enough to sustain any charges against anybody. Mr. Speaker, it was also at, pay, at paragraph 14, the committee says that no evidence was tendered by Senator Gloria Oroba to rebut the charges and hence the allegations that she made remained unsubstantiated. On the day of the hearing itself, the report says that at paragraph 11 on page 6, that it had granted her an opportunity to be heard, and she refused to take that opportunity to be heard, refusing to continue with the proceedings, and the committee elected to continue to uh, proceed and hear this matter. So all I am saying, Mr. Speaker, when this matter was first brought before the House, I was inclined to some of the thinking that I have heard some of our colleagues saying that uh, maybe the punishment that has been proposed by the committee was too harsh. But for me, Mr. Speaker, if you have gone through certain things in this House and you have publicly said this is what you are going through and it is impeding your work as a Senator in this House, and then you are granted an opportunity for you to table evidence against these things, because I do not believe that it is impossible for you to demonstrate bias. It is not impossible for you to demonstrate if Honorable any member here has treated you unfairly there will be traces, there will be tracks, but for you to make allegations and accusations against people who cannot defend themselves in public, it is very, very unfair for you then to be granted an opportunity to substantiate, then you refuse to substantiate. One of the most uh, uh, unfair things in this particular proceedings, Mr. Speaker, is that the person who was the subject of these allegations that remain unproven and unsubstantiated is a clerk in this house who does not have the same political platform like Sifuna to be able to answer you. For me, everybody in this house knows, if you come after me, we will be with you, mundu kumundu. I have no problem with that. You are very free to come and attack Sifuna on any day because I will deal with you perpendicularly, circumferentially, whatever it is. But for people seated at this table, Mr. Speaker, they do not enjoy the same privilege. What is the most hurtful thing is, and I think uh, Clark Jeremiah Nyegenye, has demonstrated some level of uh, uh, restraint and maturity that I personally do not believe I possess. Because I cannot be in a forum with you. You are making allegation after allegation after allegation. You are given opportunity to substantiate and I have to read all that information and just look at you and keep quiet. It will not happen. Some of us, I think, are built of uh, uh, a bit more volatile material that is easily, easily combustible, Mr. Speaker, and I will not allow you to continue like that. So, for those reasons, for those reasons, Mr. Speaker, I believe that Senator Gloria, having made those allegations, she had a responsibility to substantiate those uh, allegations. She had opportunity to substantiate those allegations before the committee. She elected not to appear before that committee or to tender any evidence. Those allegations remain unsubstantiated and therefore, the punishment that has been uh, proposed by the committee is something that I am willing to support and I hereby support. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Senator Sifuna. And S Senator Sifuna, for your information, I think we are mean from the same material. So, so I think we are, we are okay. That's a good material. Senator Wakoli. He has left. Senator Morango James. Asante sana mstaiki speaker. Na niseme ya kwamba nitarudia majina yangu naitwa Morango. Kazi ya Morango ni kufunga ama kufungua. 
na nimekunja hapa kupinga taarifa ambayo imeletwa hapa katika kuhusu Gloria Oromba. Kwa sababu mstaki speaker kuna jia tofauti za kujiereza. Kuna wale ambao wanajiereza vizuri kama Senator Sifuna. Kuna wale wanakaa katikati kama Semnyeti, hawataki kusema upande ambao waliko. Lakini mimi niko hapa kupinga hii taarifa kwa sababu tumeona mambo ambayo yamefanyika katika hili bunge hapo awali. Wewe mwenyewe ukiwa speaker Tunakumbuka kuna mambo ilifanyika pale na senator wa Migori. Alafu ukatoa kauli ambayo tulikuja tukakaa chini, alafu tukaipindua. Hii imefanyika kwa sababu huyu ni mwanamke ama imefanyika kwa nini mstaki speaker? Na kama mbamba watoto wasichana ndio maana nimesimama hapa kupinga. Mstaki speaker. Eh, maneno ambayo inasemekana ilifanywa ni, ma, ni maneno ya, ambayo ili, ilisemwa, sio kufanywa. Ile maneno ambayo ilifanywa atuja yongelea sana. Lakini yaliyosemwa tunayongelea sana. Na kumbaliana na adhabu. Lakini adhabu ya kufukuza mtoto msichana mezi sita. Kwa sababu ya kauli yaliyosema Sisi wenye tuko hapa ni mangabi tumesema bayo hayafai na mbado tuko hapa tukiwa na ume. Mustaiki speaker, nikiangalia tarifa ambayo imeletu hapa. Imesainiwa na wanaume tano. Waswahili usema katika mahakama ya fisi mbuzi ya pati haki. Kwa hivyo mstaiki speaker mimi ningetaka kusema hivi. Mambo ambayo tunao sema hapa. Najua kuna wakati katika kukosa kufuatilia sheria za speaker. Moja alie vunja zaidi ni senator tulie na hapa anaitwa senator Charagay. Tulikuwa naye hapa. Akakaidi amri la speaker kutoka nje ambaye alikuwa pia nafaa kuitwa katika kamati ambayo inaitwa pass privilege aliitwa kwa nini hakuitwa lakini huko kwa sababu ni mama ndio maana amepewa adhabu ambayo haifai katika manano ambayo wanasema kwamba anajua ambayo sita yatanja hapa akukuange na ushahidi ama mambo ambayo inaolewa ambayo imeongelewa imeongele, katika mwa, katika mwanaume na mwanamke na sio siri kama imefanyika ama haijafanyika na nasemi kwamba imefanyika Lakini tunafaa tukae chini, tuangalie huyu kama mwezetu, tukae chini, tuangalie ya dhambu ambayo inaofaa, sio kufukuza huyu senita uruomba miezi sita ambayo hata kanyaka katika ikikikao, na tukijua ya kwamba anakazi ya kufanya kama mama katika imbunge la seneti. Mustaiki speaker. Mustaiki speaker. Mimi nangoja kwa sababu najua kuna mtu atakaidi ile ile agizo lako tena hapa. Na ndio nione kama pia kama yeye atafanywa kama venye Ngruli amefanywa. Mustaki speaker. Katika historia hii nchi tunajaribu sana kuangalia na kumpunguza ubaguzi wa wanawake. Na ndio maana kuna sheria maalum ambayo ililetwa kwamba lazima kuwe na dhulumi mbili katika kila kikao ili tuweze kuwapatia wanawake nguvu. Sasa hivi tumekaa hapa wengi tukiwa wanaume wa kwanza kufunguzi kupunguzi kujaribu kufukuza ni mwanamke. Mimi mstaiki speaker mimi napinga kwa dhati kama murango hilo. Is your point of honor Senator Chergi? Kwanza unafahamu. Mr. Speaker understanding order 96 and 101 we need to be responsible in statements that we make. These are house of rules and order to assert that uh, I'm being treated with kids' club is, is misleading because I have received the punishment. It means if I had not, the, the, the fact that on several occasions I have suffered the punishment like Senator Sifuna. So it, it depends on the offense we have committed. When I decline, I mean, Mr. Speaker, there's the threat, and it is good that Senator Murango should be attending sessions. When I decline to, 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 to sit, the speaker, the punishment I received was to be chased out of the session for the rest of the day. So the crime and punishment must go together. And I took my punishment with glory and with humility. So it, to, to, to make assertions that uh, to other Kenyans who are watching these proceedings that Senator Cherarge and other senators are making mistakes in the floor of the house and they don't suffer consequences is misleading, Mr. Speaker. Can the senator withdraw and apologize because it is on record that I have been punished on several occasions as per the standing orders of this house, Mr. Speaker? It is very unfortunate. I didn't expect that. that such. I wish he would have qualified statement by saying Senator Cherarge has been an affront to standing orders and he has been punished accordingly. 
That is it, Mr. Speaker. But to throw the card of gender and try to intimidate some of us, Mr. Speaker, to support an illegality, we shall not be coward or intimidated, Mr. Speaker. And I've never met uh, uh, issues of sexual uh, favors from anybody. That's a very serious offense as a man. As somebody, your family, where you come from, Mr. Speaker. You, you're on a point of wonder. Now you are... No, Mr. Speaker, debating. I am mad because... You can imagine as a man, somebody has accused no, you of no, request you, for sexual favors, Mr. Speaker. So let, uh, this is, we cannot be intimidated. Let Senator Murango conclude his uh, presentation. Mr. Speaker, katika kanuni za kudumu miya moja isiri na bili. Hey, inasema kwamba makosa moja kubwa sana unambayo una, unaweza fanya ni kukosa kutoka ukiambiwa na speaker utoke inja kwa sababu Ume, kwa sababu umekosa nidhamu na ninajua kwamba kila kitu tunao chema tunao tunao sema hapa inakuwa kuna kuanga na rekodi maalum na najua hiyo rekodi maalum iko kwa sababu chenye naongea najua ni ukweli na ukweli mtupu wakati jambo kama hili lilifanyika mstaiki speaker mwenye alikuwa amefanya hiyo makosa alikuja akaitwa kukawa na kikao alafu akarudi baada ya siku moja ama mbili tunayoongelea hapa kwa mambo yanayosema anafukuzwa kwa kipindi cha miezi sita mstaiki speaker hata kama kuna makosa imefanyika na muti yote kipindi ya miezi sita ni nusu mwaka mstaiki speaker majukumu ambayo gruri anafaa kufanya katika ili bunge iko zaidi katika katiba na ni kusema kwa muda huo afai kukanyanga hapa ama kudhuri kuhudhuria mambo yote ambayo itakuwa ina ambayo itakuwa inaongelewa katika hii seneti ya kitaifa kwa hivyo mstaiki speaker sikutaka kwamba nama sikutaja seneta wanandi nikitaka kumkasirisha lakini nilikuwa na peana tu mfano kwa sababu ni mfano ambao unajulikana kuna makosa kubwa kushinda mtu ambaye anaambiwa na speaker anyamaze alafu anakuja anatoa vibango katika meza na kupeleka katika ile kamati tuliona hiyo ikifanyika hapa katika hii seneti na kwa hivyo ndo ningesema mstaiki speaker nikimalizia mugala muwe na haki yake mpe kila mtu ako na jia yake ya kujieleza tunaongelea kuhusu hapa gloria ni msichana mdogo kimiaka anafaa kuvumiliwa pamoja na wale wa mama wengine ambao wako na umri kama ule. Hiyo ndio kuwapa nafasi ya kukua katika hii seneti. Anaweza kuwa alikosea kwa kutojua ama alikosea kwa kujua. Lakini ingeuliza ya kwamba sisi wenyewe tuko hapa. Isipokuwa wale ambao nadhani sio mababa wa wasichana kama mimi. Wachukue hata Biblia ilisema ya kwamba asiyekuwa na makosa achukue njiwe la kwanza kumtupia yule mwanamke ambaye anasema katika Biblia. Yesu akasema hivyo. Na mimi ningesema kwamba ambaye hajawahi kosa katika ili bunge la Cheriti, haya kwanza kurusha mawe na kumkashifu na kumfukuza Senator Gloria. Asante sana mheshimiwa speaker. Senator Ezena Amaretian. Thank you so much Mr. Speaker and I rise to strongly oppose the report sent before this house. Uh, because uh, I think everybody deserves a second chance and most importantly because I note that we are all not made equal all human beings are made very differently and there is no way that we all want to conform or confine human beings to behave in a particular way or express themselves in a particular way for those of you who think they are gifted in expressing yourselves or, or, or projecting your frustrations not everybody can be like you and as an, an as a mature human being and a leader what we need to learn is how to tolerate each other if you know that this particular person has this kind of character then know how to tolerate that character and respect who they are because we all have different characters we all have we all have different personalities and again secondly let's not forget that we are talking about sexual harassment here this is something that has been downplayed over so many years and a lot of us have gone through so many frustrations of refusing to be employed because of sexual advances from particularly the men not only that there are also young men in offices 
who I know have gone through a lot of sexual harassment from ladies, older ladies. And I'm very frustrated as a young person in this country because that has been the norm within this nation, that somebody will be asked for sexual favors. If you don't conform, you remain jobless. And while at the same time, a lot of people are losing and missing opportunities because of this thorn in the flesh. What this house should be talking about is putting strong and stringent laws forward to regulate sexual harassment, especially in public and government offices. From the top to the bottom, we have had a lot of reports even in the media of women being sexually harassed. And right now to the public, what they see is a young assertive woman who rose and defended against sexual harassment. A lot of times, we might see different things in the house, but what, how, what does the public see? What does the public see? And a lot of times, when assertive women come out and defend their position on these issues, their heads are pressed down. The thing this house should be discussing is how to prevent sexual harassment. And a lot of times when the victim has been harassed, you are not in a position to get evidence. Things flow and you don't, you don't have evidence. A minute, Senator Azena, what is your point of order? And Again, let us also not continue just raising point of order. No, 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 Mr. Speaker. I, I am not in the habit of raising frivolous points of order. Understanding Order 120, again to remind this House, that the report before us is a report of the Powers and Privileges Committee. In this particular case, nobody has accused Gloria of being an assertive woman. Nobody has accused her of lack of proper expression. We are not saying she cannot express herself. She's one of the most eloquent senators in this house. The, pro, the, the, the report of the house is very simple. She made allegations. She needed to substantiate. She failed to substantiate. There are consequences of dragging people's names through the mud and then you don't say it. You don't come here to lecture us about oh, sexual this, sexual that. Show us the evidence. Show us the evidence. Nobody is interested in sexual advances here. Senator Sifuna. Senator Sifuna, you know you cannot uh, put exact ones that any senator should uh, use in this house. As long as she is contributing on this particular matter. She is contributing on this particular matter. If I reason she is defending women and the young leaders, young women leaders. So to me she is not out of order. Senator Azena, proceed and conclude your minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is exactly what happens when young women are assertive in this country. And it is time, Mr. Speaker, some people, I am, I am, members, honorable members, Senator Zena, I am, from behind and I have the right to be heard. Because, be Mr. Inside. Speaker, protect me, Mr. Speaker. Time to, to get to the floor. You Protect me, Mr. Speaker, from people exhibiting chauvinism, male chauvinism. Senator Zena, stop and raising members. Just proceed and conclude your uh, Thank contribution. You. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sifuna, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Uh, on, uh, Senator Sifuna does not utilize my eyes. I do not use your eyes to read the report, nor do you live with me. There is no way you will know if I read the report or not. So stick to your lane. Senator Zena, stop and raise the members directed and raise the chair kindly. Thank Andres you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as I continue, like I reiterated, that what we need to discuss in this house in how, is how to protect people and young women especially from sexual harassment. Why? Because a lot of times when these allegations are made or we have cases like this, a lot of times it's thrown under the bus because there is no evidence. 
and a lot of in a lot of instances when this is happening you do not even have time to get evidence so mr speaker we need to be very fair in how we approach these issues and know that this house is a house for all of us and everybody deserves respect i do not agree with the insults uh, um, labeled against uh, our fellow colleagues but at the same time you do not see every problem uh, when you have a hammer you see every problem as a nail we must not use hammers to correct or to organs to deal with very small problems thank you mr speaker thank you senator abdraman abdilhai milaj Asante bwana speaker na mimi pia nasimama kupinga mswada huu ulioletwa na kamati ya powers and privileges kwa sababu zangu na nianze kwa kutanguliza samahani kwa karani wetu wa bunge ambaye ameweza kuyapitia haya mengi ambayo tumekuwa tukiaona katika ukurasa wetu wa WhatsApp hata mimi sipendelei jinsi anavyojibeba dadangu seneta Gloria Uroba jumla ya hayo nasimama kupinga uamuzi wa kamati hii kwa sababu ya kwanza hakuna mahali kokote mwanamke yoyote ama mwanamume anaweza kutoa ushahidi wa kwamba ameombwa kimapenzi ama ameombwa mapenzi na inasikitisha kusikia katika corridor zetu za senate kusema ya kwamba ikiwa kila mwanamke anayeomba mapenzi ataweza kujibeba vile glory amejibeba basi tutakuwa tunafunga wanaume wengi kauli hiyo imenisikitisha sana mimi kama kiongozi wa kike mchanga ambaye nimejitosa katika tasnia hii ya kisiasa mtakubaliana na mimi ya kwamba tunapitia changamoto nyingi kama wanawake na zaidi kama watoto wa kike wa umri wetu kuweza kufika katika hadhi hii ya kisiasa ambao sisi mimi Gloria na wengine tumefikia na ni jambo la kusikitisha zaidi bwana speaker kuona ya kwamba nyumba hii ya seneti hata na uongozi wake wa wengi na wa wachache wamekosa busara wamekosa hekima ya kuweza kulitatua tatizo hili pindi lilipokuwa linaanza sisi waswahili husema kidonda hujianza kwa mwasho kikakunwa paka kikakuwa kidonda kikubwa malalamishi ya senator gloria uroba bana speaker hayakuanza jana wala juzi na nikubaliane na senator murango hapa ya kwamba kuna makosa mengi tu yamefanywa na viongozi wenza kama aliyofanya senator gloria uroba na kila mtu bwana speaker ako na jinsi ya vile anajieleza anapokumbwa na changamoto katika maisha yake kuna watu wingi tumewaona wamejitundika katika miti na kukomit suicide kwa matatizo ambayo wangeweza kukaa na wenzao na wakayatatua kwa hivyo mimi sioni bina ama sioni jambo geni ambalo senator gloria oroba amelifanya ambalo viongozi wengine hapa wa kiume wamefanya nilikuwa katika launch ya kutulia wakati senator sifuna akitusi speaker wa hili bunge madam vera mikamaina akimwambia shem 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 na speaker alizokuja kukaa hapa alimfurusha kwa majuma kadha lakini kwa sababu ni seneta wa kiume siku ya pili kwa kikao cha saa seneta sifuna aliweza kuregeshwa na akaendelea na shughuli zake za kuwakilisha kuwa watu wa Nairobi speaker sisi asante bwana mimi najua Kiswahili ni lugha ya kitaifa Onda, na ni lugha yenye hazi hata senator kushinda hicho kimombo chenu kilichokuja na meli hapa Kenya. Onda Senator Sifuna. Stop exchanging ones across the floor. Wanaspeaker hizi ndio tabia na nizamu ambazo tunaziongelea. 
nizamu potofu hata za kushinda zile glory amefanya katika hii seneti lakini kwa sababu I'm saying these house must have samonda. Asante bwana speaker kwa kunilinda. Hizi ndio nidhamu ambazo tunazizungumzia mbaya zaidi na potofu hata kushinda vile glory amefanya. Bwana speaker. Samahani. If you want to address anything address through the chair. Kuna watu wengi tuko hapa speaker na tunaona yale yanaendelea. Na kimya chetu kisichukuliwe tu ati tuko na hatujui kile tunafanya hapa. Ni mara nyingi na mara kadhaa sisi nominated senators wengi wetu tukiwa watoto wa kike huko nje tunaitwa sisi wanawake ambao tumepewa hivi vyeo kwa ajili ya kulala na wakuu katika vyama vya kisiasa. Na leo Gloria Oroba analetwa hapa na kutaka kuhukumiwa tu kwa sababu ni mtoto wa kike ambaye ametumia matamshi yasiyofaa kwa wakati ambao watu walitarajia matamshi tofauti na yale ambao wanakubaliana. Mimi nakubaliana na ndugu zangu yapo matamshi ambayo dadangu seneta anayatumia hata zidi yangu lakini sisi kama viongozi ni wakati tutumie hekima na busara tusitumie hawaza na usi zetu kutaka kumwadhibu mtoto wa kike ambaye amepitia yale ambayo wengi kule nje wameshindwa kuweza kufika hapa sisi nominated senators tumeletwa katika bunge hili ili tuweze kuwawakilisha wengi wanawake ambao hawakupata fursa ya kuweza kufika katika nyumba kama hii na mimi leo nimeongea bwana speaker ili iweze kuwa katika kumbukumbu ya historia ya taifa la Kenya ya kwamba sitakubali siku yoyote mtoto wa kike anyanyase kwa sababu ya jinsia yake anyanyase kwa sababu uamuzi mmoja unaweza kutumika katika kosa hilo na utumiwe uamuzi tofauti kwa kosa lilo hilo nimetangulia kusema na ninasimama na karani wa senate kwamba yale yaliyotamkwa hata mimi sahihi nikitoka mtoto wa kiume anifinyie jicho pale ukiniambia nitoe ushahidi sitaweza kuwa na ushahidi wa kuwa nimefinyiwa jicho na nimeombwa kimapenzi kwa hivyo tukiwa hapa bwana speaker tukiwa tunataka kumwadhibu senator gloria oroba kwanza ningependekeza powers and privileges walimpeleka dada yetu siptali wakajua kwamba yuko mzima kwa yale anayoyatenda kwa sababu zile tabia za gloria oroba zinahitaji kusimamiwa na daktari ili tuweze kujua tuna deal na koligwa aina gani lakini sisi kama wenzake ambao anatarajia kuwa tutamtetea bwana speaker ndio tumekuja hapa na bunduki na maneno ya kejeli tumekuja na nyundo tayari kumgonga naomba bwana speaker ikiwa kuna suluhu tunaweza kumsaidia dadangu senator gloria mimi ni raja abdilai ningeomba apelekwe katika zahanati aweze kupimwa kama ni mzima tumsaidie huu ni wakati ambao Gloria anatuhitaji kushinda wakati mwingine. Asante bwana speaker kwa hayo mengi na machache. Asante sana. Ameshamaliza. Seneta Koiti Andrew Mtata. She is done. Uh, Mr. Uh, speaker sir, thank you for the opportunity. But I would, I would gladly have skipped the, the opportunity because of the the amount of sulfur I can smell in this house. It's like I'm in hell and the devil is around. <laughs> Behind me, yes. It's a pungent smell of sulfur in this house. So, the, the report before us is not a gender issue. Yes. <laughs> you could remove the name or Roba and put Sifuna and the report would still stand. So I don't I don't get I don't understand where the invitation to discuss gender is coming from. Secondly, you cannot stand here and purport to argue that the clerk is guilty as accused. 
No, they are saying that you cannot, you cannot prove if somebody has gufinya jicho or whatever it is. So you are saying that once an allegation of sexual misconduct or sexual harassment is made, it is, it is proven. Honorable Zufuna just demonstrated to us how somebody has suffered on false allegations. Senator Oroba was given a chance to defend herself. And I follow these, these discussions keenly. And I want to submit that if you go to the record, sexual harassment came at the tail end. This allegation of sexual harassment came at the tail end. And I wonder how the sexual harassment would then happen after it had been alleged to have happened, it had been alleged. So let us sober up and debate what is before this house. Also, two wrongs don't make right. Because somebody else misconducted himself or herself, it doesn't mean that we should misconduct ourselves. We must know that when you go on social media, do billboards, and some of the hashtags were impeach, nyegenye, do whatever, this was totally uncalled for. There had been no report to law enforcement about sexual harassment. There was no recollection in this report that, uh, that an OB number was obtained alleging that the clerk had sexually harassed Senator Roba or any staff member or any member of the secretariat had done that. So I would request that as we contribute, we should also respect the right of individuals to a good reputation which is in the constitution. Let us not come here and make pronouncements that have no evidentiary support. We live in a, a country that is governed by the constitution which, pres which prescribes due process. Due process was accorded to Senator Gloria Roba to defend herself. And anywhere, if you don't defend yourself, you lose. So let us not come here and cast our passions and make, make grave allegations against innocent people. <clears throat> In this country, you are innocent until proven guilty. So what I'm hearing on this floor is demonic. Satanic. You cannot allow it to continue. So, they, whether you are a woman or a man, take it out there. Senator. We did not choose. Senator Kiyom Tata, kindly use parliamentary language. I thought the word demonic and satanic. There is no honorable senator who can be satanic. No, I said what I hear. Be demonic. I said what I was hearing. Yeah. There is no satanic there, or demonic there senator. There is no senator who can even try to demonstrate if satanic ways and how No, but they can utter satanic and demonic so words. Use very nice parliamentary language. You are speaking so I'm, well. I'm guided. Just put, put, use the I'm right, guided. right language. I'm guided, you are, Mr. Speaker, sir. So, my, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, let us have a sober debate on this report. The Committee of Privileges has spent its time. And from where I sit, the report is detailed. Maybe we could, we could discuss the kind of punishment that is recommended. We could discuss the kind of punishment recommended. Uh, Mr. Speaker, so protect me from the, my friend, Senator Murango, who is consulting loudly. Yeah, Senator Murango, kindly consult in the low tools. Mr. Speaker, sir, I would really urge that we look at this thing without putting on the, uh, the gender lens. The gender lens has been wielded to destroy the boy child. And even the boy child can fight back. 
Let nobody think that this world belongs to women. It does not. It belongs to both of us. It belongs to both of us, Mr. Speaker, with equal rights. And if a, if a matter is being prosecuted, let us prosecute it on the merits of the case before us. And the merits of the case before us is that there are allegations that were made, as Governor Sifuna, as Senator Sifuna said. Governor is okay. Okay. <laughs> as uh, Honorable Sifuna said, and the allegations were presented before the committee of this house performing a quasi-judicial function. And the committee of this house, using its powers, gave the person making the allegation the right to be heard. The person declined to be heard. The person did not show up before the committee. And the, and the offer was either to appear in person or by advocate. The person did not appear. The allegations are being made against people who, like every one of us, have a right to a good reputation. People have been serving us diligently. And if I may go back, a few, a few, a few months before this happened, there had been serious allegations that uh, vehicles had been broken in. At the, at the Senate parking. Police were got involved. The CCTV reels were run. Even some had not parked their vehicles there on that day. It is just that the secretariat, led by the clerk, decided to cool things off and to let those, governor, those senators go. So this idea of making wild allegations must come to an end. If you can't prove it, shut up. And to say that it's impossible to prove this kind of thing is not true with the kind of technology we have today. With the keyhole cameras, even, even uh, sunglasses like the ones worn by the indomitable senator of Nandi can be used to record things. So I really think that what we should really concern ourselves is the kind of sanctions that have been proposed against Senator Gloria Oroba I think they're a bit draconian. We can uh, shorten the term and make her make an apology. We come from a tradition like that says that when you bite your tongue, you cannot spit out all the blood. You may have to swallow some. So let us swallow some of the blood. Let us punish, not to kill, but to correct. And I think that as a house, we owe it to ourselves to be our brother's keepers. And I use the word brothers to include even women, but that's how the idiom is. You cannot modify an English idiom. So I don't accuse me of being gender biased when I say to be a brother's keeper. What happened in the, uh, uh, at the creation time, it was two brothers who fought. So I pray that I support this report. I pray that we adopt the report, but we modify the punishment. And I would recommend that the period of suspension be shorter. And that the apology be rendered not just to this house, but to the members of staff who are maligned. I think Mr. Nyegenye deserves a direct apology. A written apology, not just the house. Because the house was not insulted. It was individuals who were insulted, and let us modify the report to include an apology directed at the staff members who were affected by the vitriol that spewed out from our sisters. Uh, it, was not, it was our sister's fingers when she typed 
on the keyboard of her phone or whatever gadget she was using. With those few remarks, I, su I, I support the report. Senator Tobiko Felis. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I thank you for this opportunity and I arise to reject the report, Mr. Speaker, or uh, to oppose the report, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, um, we d I do agree uh, because of seeing on, on our WhatsApp pages, uh, you know, the kind of uh, uh, character and wordings that have been on the page uh, from Senator Oruoba, which is not fit, uh, Mr. Speaker, for a leader at this level. But Mr. Speaker, what I oppose in this report, Mr. Speaker, is a kind of punishment that's being meted on uh, Senator Oruoba. Mr. Speaker, I believe there was a better way for, the, for this House to deal with this matter. Even, Mr. Speaker, it should not have reached at this level for, for, for it to be on the floor of the House for the entire public to, to be entertained with the kind of shenanigans that, that we have seen uh, going on, Mr. Speaker. It's, need, it's not good for Senator Oroba, neither is it good for the clerk, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this House has uh, an integrity, this House has um, um, uh, some standards to maintain, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, a lot of things go on. And I just want to tell our younger sisters who are joining politics now, that in the political field, you'll hear so much. You will go through so much. I'm not telling them to keep quiet, but I'm telling them to know the way to handle. Because the way you jump through the hurdles is what will determine your success tomorrow, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, our sister, uh, Senator uh, uh, Gloria, had better ways of dealing with this. Uh, she should have appeared before the committee. She should have given evidence. But, Mr. Speaker, as earlier speakers have said, we do not know what exactly we are dealing with uh, in terms of the mental health of our sister. Maybe she needs to be uh, given time. Maybe she's dealing with bigger matters than even this one, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the frustrations uh, can be a lot, even with, from, from the kind of work we do, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I would say that uh, uh, Senator Oruba may not have handled herself in a, in, a, in a way that is acceptable, but the punishment that is being meted here, Mr. Speaker, I think is, has gone overboard, Mr. Speaker. It is excessive, it is insensitive, it's inconsiderate, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I am not uh, trying to, uh, you know, water down the effects of this on the, on the clerk, Mr. Speaker. But I believe even the House leadership should have dealt with this matter better. That this was not meant for public, a public forum like this, Mr. Speaker. It was not meant to reach here, Mr. Speaker. The House leadership should have done better, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I arise to say that uh, uh, the, 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 the um, punishment that is prescribed in this report is not fair, should not happen, and Mr. Speaker, uh, better ways of dealing with this situation should be uh, uh, gotten, Mr. Speaker. But either way, Mr. Speaker, without telling ladies to be uh, silent on what they go through, I would also tell our sisters that, um, you know, people asking sexual favors will now depend completely on you, on, on, on you on whether you reject or accept, it is, your, it, it is really upon you. What we would have gone to the rooftops, we would have gone to the top of KICC, is if our sister was sexually molested, uh, raped without, I mean, uh, uh, taken advantage of without consent, Mr. Speaker. That one, we would have gone to the top of, of KCC to shout against. 
but without proof we are put in a very awkward situation on how to defend her we are put in a very awkward situation knowing that the clerk is a family a family person and so is senator oroba mr speaker this house has not been given sufficient facts to be able to conclusively deal with this case mr speaker and so mr speaker it, we, there was no way we could take the hammer against uh, Senator Oroba, neither were we going to tell her to be silent if she has gone through um, the, the kind of harassment that is alleged here, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I will just tell uh, the members of this House to, to consider fairly both the accused and the accuser, Mr. Speaker, that we should take our time to know really what the, uh, the Honorable Senator has gone through. Because I don't believe in the right state of mind she can just put wild allegations that do not hold water. Maybe the way she has approached the whole matter is what is a problem here, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I also don't imagine that the clerk with a reputation and a long-standing experience in this house and ha there has never been any allegations, it is something that baffles. It's only the two of them that will be able to really come out clean on this matter. Either way, Mr. Speaker, the house leadership, according to me, the back lies, the, the back lies with the house leadership. They have failed to really uh, protect the integrity of this house by uh, uh, solving this matter at a, at a very early stage, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I arise to oppose. Thank you. Senator Beatrice Akinyi. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity to add my voice uh, to this motion that we least expected we'd use the, uh, the floor of the Senate to discuss. Honorable Speaker, I want to begin by giving a short uh, occurrence in my village and other villages, Honorable Speaker, that there are notorious women in my village who when they beat their husbands, they make the loudest noise. <laughs> And Honorable Speaker, even though the community knows that these women physically molest their husbands, when they do it, they are the first to come out of the buildings making the loudest noise. And Honorable Speaker, men equally have suffered in this country at the hands of women. And in most of organizations, Honorable Speaker at my level, and I was young then, younger than even Senator Gloria and a number of us here. As old as we were, we were once young. And in practice, Honorable Speaker, I do not see anybody here who doesn't have the capacity to say no when there are advances made against them. Because, then why would they be here? Honorable Speaker, as I am a woman senator, but it is important that Kenyans take note that as women we cannot continue to use the gender card to harass men left and right. And here we are talking about sexual harassment. And sexual harassment is not only limited to women and to men. Honorable Speaker, there are women who continuously harass men for sex. And if we went further, Honorable Speaker, we'd find a situation where the people making allegations are the ones harassing the men even here more. Honorable Speaker, who cannot say no? We want people to come out and say that I'm here and I'm not able to say no when there's an advance. And Honorable Speaker, we have serious issues to talk about in the Senate 
And some of these issues are not the issues we are going to talk about. Honorable Speaker, Honorable this Honorable issue... Members, Honda. Senator Mundigi. Honda. Honda. Honorable Speaker, this is you not the first time... that you are exhibiting are really... They, 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 these men are very happy that you are able... <laughs> 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 Honorable Speaker, I can tell you, given an opportunity and out of the floor here, you'll find that it is some of these women that are harassing this man. Yeah. On the floor of this house, Honorable Speaker, this motion came up. And what were we treated to, Honorable Speaker? We respected the fact that our majority and minority leader came uh, to stand down the motion. Our expectation, Honorable Speaker, is this was going to be handled elsewhere. We did not expect that we are going to take weeks and then be treated to the same story. But now that it has come, let us say the truth. That women cannot continue because you are women, to harass men over sex. And even though we keep on saying young, young what? Who is, who is a child here? How did, how did, Honorable Speaker, how did we end up with children in the Senate? Honorable Speaker, once, the minority leader and the minority the minority leader and the minority leader came in we saw what happened because some this motion the content of discussion here was has been an issue of a whatsapp an official whatsapp uh, communication but what did we see as senators the conversation continued from the same senator and that is a sign that they was not ready to even go for medi mediation and even listen. Honorable Speaker, alternative dispute resolution is a mechanism enshrined in the Constitution of Kenya. But Honorable Speaker, if somebody is not ready to listen, if they are not ready to listen to, to, listen to leadership, to listen to anybody here, to listen to colleagues, what then do we do? But twice people say, Honorable Speaker, and that when you are in a hole, you should also stop digging. And Honorable Speaker, let me remind ourselves that as senators, I believe all of us signed the Code of Conduct, even at, with our parties, um, uh, our nominating parties. But this House is here to protect the Constitution. And the Constitution is very clear about leadership. Leadership and integrity that talks about personal integrity, that talks about respect for others, that talks about a leader conducting themselves to bring dignity to the office that you hold. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, is what the Senator doing bringing any dignity to her office as a nominated Senator or as to the Senate as a House? Honorable Speaker, the same constitution talks about the rights. And the rights are not limited to women. The rights are limited to the rights of women and men. And it talks about to equal rights, to equal protection. Honorable Speaker, let us not delude ourselves that if you have had an opportunity to be a member of this house, thousands of Kenyans are out there that should have been here and you want to behave as if you are above rules and laws. Honorable Speaker, leadership requires that you behave with decorum, that you respect each other, that you maintain some discipline, that you maintain some personal integrity. Honorable Speaker, I'm not saying that our sisters should be axed out of this Senate. But I'm saying that as senators, some of us came to the Senate by choice because we believed it is a house of order, a house of sobriety, a house of discipline, but not what we are seeing. Honorable Speaker, I support that motion. And as I support it, 
I want to say that parliament should not be used as a house to seek attention. And if you are seeking attention, Honorable Speaker, I think you should seek it elsewhere and not a house of parliament. So, Honorable Speaker, I support the motion and I want to advise for anybody who listens because a number of senators who think they are young and who believe we were never young once think they cannot listen to others. Honorable Speaker, I support this motion and I want to say, Honorable Speaker, as I end, that alternative dispute resolution must be used as a mechanism of uh, sorting out conflicts but end up by saying, Honorable Speaker, we should stop digging holes when we are ready in one. And Honorable Speaker, why I say this is that even after the allegations about the clerk, we have seen the same conflict move from officer to officer. We have seen the same conflict move from senator to senator. We have seen the same abuse directed to other senators. Are these not people who also have rights to protection? Honorable Speaker, I support. Thank you, Senator David Wakoli. Asante, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mheshimiwa Speaker, wa Kenya wanatazama kwa makini sana yale tunajadili. Wa Kenya wanajua fika kwamba walipigia viongozi timamu watu wazima kura. Na wakuchagua watu kwa sababu ya urembo, sura, ulimi, mate. Walichagua watu ambao wana akili timamu. Mheshimiwa Speaker, Hawezi kwamba mtu anapita barabarani, anatabasamu, anatembea katika barase za mji na katika majengo ya bunge. Na binti mmoja ambaye anadhani kwamba ni mrembo kwa wote, anapomuona banati anapita, anapiga nduru akisema na nimezea mate. Mheshimiwa ntabia mbovu. Umenke ama jinsia ya mtu haimpi ruhusu kudunisha mwingine. Yale tumeona kwenye mitandao mheshimiwa speaker ni kinaya sana. Mbunge, seneta anaandika matamshi ama maneno yasiyoweza someka na wa seneta wenye hadhi na tajriba ambayo tumo hapa sasa. Nilikuwa katika vikao hivyo mheshimiwa speaker binti huyu amejipodoa sawa amekuja na mawakili na majalada wamebeba mazito sawa lakini ndani ya majalada haya hamna chochote kutisha maseneta kwamba ameleta mawakili wengine wetu ni walimu si mawakili lakini tunatumia hekima zaliwa ile tulizaliwa nayo na tulijadili tukaona huyu msichana anahitaji matibabu madaktari wako hapa wewe ni mtazamo wangu mheshimiwa Bonnie Kalwale. Eda apewe dawa apone ama kuna wale madaktari wa akili ambao watakaa naye wamsikize kama ni nyimbo wamwimbie kama ni maombi mabisho wako hapa wamuombe ili jumba la Senate likose kuwa kicheko kwa wakenya. Nimeona wa maseneta wanawake hapa ambao wanasahau kwamba watahitaji wanaume siku zijazo lazima wavumilie vijana kama mimi ambao tutataka kuongeza wake lazima tuvumilie lakini si kwamba nikikutazama na kutaka hapa na wenda na kuhurumia <laughs> mheshimiwa kule kwetu sema Ukimwona binti unapopita mara unapiga milunzi na kila mara anageuka kutazama anafikiria uenda mwanya katika midomo yake na kupendeza kumbe ni, ni tabia yake mbaya na inakufanya unataka kukimbia kama umemwona nyoka Ndiyo hayo ninaona katika jumba la senate na ukimwona nyoka toroka 
yale ambayo tumependekeza kama komiti na mamlaka na heshima ya bunge ni kali sawa lakini unapoyavulia lazima uyaoge na muonea huruma tunaweza punguza nusu lakini mwezi mmoja matibabu alafu miezi miwili nje ya bunge hiyo ni miezi ngapi tatu na nyinyi mnajua mambo ni matatu Mheshimiwa speaker sitaki kupita hapo lakini naomba maseneta tutembee pamoja tufanye kazi pamoja tuwe na heshima Kiongozi kama nyegenye amechukua miaka mingi amesoma na tajriba ana familia ana hadhi anatambulika kote ulimwenguni haiwezekani mtoto bado ananyonya anakuja kumpaka tope haiwezekani sasa sisi tutasimama na mapendekezo na nadhani kwamba heshima itadumu katika jumba la senate kwa hayo mengi wanaume wenzangu tukaze kamba tujitetee tunapotetea wanawake lakini wasitumie ume wetu kama donda ambalo watafanyia mzaha <laughs> na nikimalizia nyenye mnakumbuka kuna matamshi wamekuwa wakisema kama una kile kitu atikitumie kikupe kile unachotaka sijui ni kitu gani nyinyi shangaeni tu hata mimi nashangaa ni kitu gani lakini hicho kitu ni katiba tutumie tujilinde tujitetee wanaume kwa wanawake jumba la senate lisonge mbele asante sana senator Catherine Muma Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity to contribute to this uh, very important uh, report tabled by one of the most important committees we have in this House. Mr. Speaker, Parliament, including National Assembly and the Senate, is a workplace. And it is a unique workplace that has staff of Parliamentary Service Commission brought to provide services to elected members, senators and National Assembly members. Mr. Speaker, we then have senators and members of the National Assembly part of this workplace but properly speaking, employees of the people being provided services by the Parliamentary Service Commission. Mr. Speaker, I have looked at the Parliamentary Service Commission HR policy and matters sexual harassment and other harassment is addressed only to the extent that it touches on members of staff. But we currently only use the standing orders, the Committee on Powers and Privilege, which is not, in fact, given detailed guidance on how to deal with allegations. Mr. Speaker, it is possible that we can have sexual harassment between members of parliament, between a member and staff, between staff and a member. Mr. Speaker, those are serious allegations. So where serious allegations have been made on sexual misconduct, Mr. Speaker, they have to be taken seriously by the House. And if it is found that the allegations are made in the air for publicity, it is important that we discourage such behavior. World over, allegations of sexual harassment have brought down very powerful people. They are not tolerated anywhere. It is therefore absolutely important that when anyone comes up with allegations that so-and-so 
has sexually harassed me, they must be able, for the sake of the rights of whom, whomever they are accusing, they must be able to substantiate what they're saying. Mr. Speaker, this report shows that allegations were made, allegations were not substantiated. Mr. Speaker, those allegations were not make, made at the back. They were made on a forum where we all are. So if you are fair human beings and judges, you know exactly what those allegations were. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, the person who was being accused is a member of staff and we stand in power over that member of staff, they were unable to respond to anything. They have been unable to respond to this anywhere. Mr. Speaker, if this happened in the executive, I am sure there would be a defamation lawsuit in our courts that would, might very well yield a lot of damages. Mr. Speaker, so as we debate in this house, let us not trivialize this matter. As we debate in this house, let us remember that what we are doing now is the only recourse that the staff have against allegations made against them. Are we condoning sexual harassment? No. If anybody engages in sexual harassment and we find them culpable, Mr. Speaker, we must as a house be able to deal with this issue. And that is why when the matter went on and on and on, we suggested that the Powers and Privileges Committee sit and call the senator involved to actually bring the evidence. The report shows she was not able to do that. Mr. Speaker, I happen to come from the women's movement. And as women, we were watching closely and I think I may have been the first person to say if there is any allegation about against the senator on sexual harassment, it must be dealt with. If you check through the WhatsApp, you will find that I insisted that the matter be investigated. Mr. Speaker, out there we have hundreds of girls and women who are harassed but they are not able to access justice. When we therefore, as leaders, women leaders, weaponize gender, we actually harm the women's movement. So I want to say it clearly, knowing that the public is watching, that we will defend all cases of sexual harassment, but we will not allow gender to be weaponized in order to hurt the movement for women because we know many women are hurting out there mr speaker sexual harassment is not about a man against a woman it can be either way mr speaker those involved are human beings with rights mr nyegenya has a wife he has a daughter he has a son i would want to dare any of you to tell us how you look if your daughter was told you have harassed somebody sexually. So we must protect those who are going to be hurt outside there because of our careless utterances in this house. So I would want to ask both men and women in this house to stand up for what is right, to know that your state officers, to know that you are subject to chapter 6, of the Constitution and you will not use this house to individually hurt the rights of others. Mr. Speaker, as we move forward, I want to recommend that Parliamentary Service Commission use this situation and others to put a framework in place that can ensure protection of those who may be sexually harassed but also protection of those who will be harassed elsehow for political or other purposes. So we need as a house to put our house in order. I think this is a shameful day that I have to stand as a woman and be able to say I don't believe what a woman has said. It is saddening. But let us not kid ourselves. Let us do what is right. Tomorrow it will be you 
who will be accused falsely of sexually harassing. But Mr. Speaker, as I finalize, in case Senator Gloria believes this house is not fair, sexual harassment is an offense under the laws of Kenya. Please let her go to the courts and sue Mr. Nyegenye. And Mr. Nyegenye should also be encouraged. He also has his rights. The fact that he serves us does not mean we take away his rights. He can also go to court to sue on defamation if it turns out that the, suit, the, 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 the charges against him are not uh, sustained. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On the issue of, of the punishment, Mr. Speaker, I would be among those who say, maybe let's give her half the time, not the full six months. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Okay. Senator Bonnie Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, may our collective resolve and decision this afternoon raise the bar and improve the respect for women in politics. Mr. Speaker, similarly, may it strengthen Parliament. Two points. In the House of Commons, when the Prime Minister of Great Britain, Boris Johnson, the one who led Britain to exit the EU, he was one of the most remarkable leaders in the history of the European Union. But when he was found with Ms. Demina going to a party against COVID-19 rules. And then he was asked to speak to it. He misled the house. Instead of admitting and saying, I am sorry. And for that reason, the prime minister was put before the powers and privileges committee of the House of Commons, the equivalent of this committee that we are debating today. And powerful as he was, he submitted himself and presented evidence and using a team of competent lawyers and he was removed because they were protecting the House of Commons. Senator Gloria has been given an opportunity to go and defend herself on her allegations. She has refused. What do you call it? is called, in English, is called contempt. She was contemptuous of the committee. And as if it was not enough, Mr. Speaker, she was contemptuous of the clerk's team because her accusations were leveled against the CEO. And Mr. Speaker, going on the social media group, she was equally contemptuous of all of us. So we have to protect this house by agreeing with the committee. Number two, the woman, and I want to speak mainly to the nominated senator from Samburu and the nominated senator from Mombasa. You are young people, and we love young people because we have some in our houses. Mr. Speaker, it's up to them they can say and say the good things they have said, but as with the benefit of hindsight, many years of experience, we want to guide them as follows. Instead of you pursuing that trajectory, go and read tonight the story of Grace Onyango. Grace was the woman who broke the glass ceiling for a woman to be elected MP in Kenya. She was truly a graceful Lua woman. Teach, teach. Mr. Speaker, let them tonight go and read the story of Chelagat Mutai. Chelagat Mutai was a great woman. Yes. She is a hero 
of the second liberation of this country. She was detained. She was exiled. But Delegate Mutai never walked on her knees. Who are these young people who want to lecture us when we know the story of Jalagat Mutai? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, tonight, these young women should go and read yes. the story of Phoebe Asio. <laughs> Phoebe Asio was in this house. Phoebe was a great woman. She was MP. And because of that distinction, Phoebe was named ambassador to the UN in charge of development funds for women in the world. Give us a break. If, if you have time and you must have it, young senators, women, go and read the story of Professor Wangari Muta Madai from Nyeri. She won the Nobel Peace Prize. She was an MP in Nyeri. Mr. Speaker, bear with me. I want to move along with these young people. They think they say anything about them. If the young lady from Meru, if I just give you the photograph of Zinzi, my daughter, you look the other way. She is something. <laughs> And, and let me tell you guys, we have to talk to these young people the truth. We are training them to do it better. We were trained by Michael Kijana Omalua, yes. Martin Shukuku, yes. and George Anyona. Yes. That's why we are good. Senator Mboni Kalwale. Mr. Speaker, sir. With your experience as a legislator. Yes. And as seen in this house, avoid calling honorable members people. And oh, sorry, I'm very sorry. Women. Sorry, I, I thought when I say young people, it was respectful, but yeah. I, 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 I recall those Let's words. Refer to them Thank you. Agree. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, sir, when I quote the name of my daughter, Zinzi, we named her after Zinzi Mandela, the daughter of Nelson Mandela. The daughter of Nelson Mandela is one of the most decent people in South Africa. Mr. Speaker, sir? Mr. Speaker, sir? I want to appeal to the nominated senator from Mombasa. One of the greatest senators in the history of this Senate is nominated Senator Agnes Zani. Tonight, go and read the story and the contribution of Dr. Agnes Zani in this house. Don't talk about youth, women, youth, women. What kind of youth, what kind of woman? It is what you should be telling us. Mr. Speaker, sir, I will not stop without reminding ourselves that the first woman to run for president, Charity Ngilu, has been in this place. She has never abused anybody. She just looks for her votes and she defeats men. Mr. Speaker, sir, the first woman to break just the glass minute, ceiling. Senator Boni, Senator Izena Lemaretian, do you have a point of order? What is your point of order? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Is it in order for Senator Boni, with all his wisdom and uh, uh, experience being in this house as an elder, is it in order for him to keep referring to us or to address you directly? And secondly, why is he using this opportunity to label us and, and character assassinate us and compare us to other people? The fact that we rose on the floor of this house to defend a woman whom I termed as assertive does not mean you start attacking the person of my character. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I leave it to you, but if you allow me, let me help her. That in standing orders is called being frivolous. Yes. Mr. Speaker, sir. I want to Senator conclude Monikarole, this paragraph. Senator Ezena is equally yes. the angel of Sinzi. So I know her with a lot of care. With okay, the so oh, yeah. let me help her. Yes. I, I want to carry you along. <laughs> no, no. I, I want to, I'm carrying you along, my daughter. 
And I can assure you, I'm very tough on my daughters. And I'm not saying they are good, but I'm very tough on them. Mr. Speaker, sir, I want these people who are driving this gender thing to know that there, was a, there is a great woman in this country. She's old. She's called Nyiva Mwendwa. Nyiva broke the glass ceiling. Nyiva became minister. And Nyiva, for all the years she was in this parliament, I was with her here in the Lions Parliament. She never said that a man is looking at me. Nyiva is truly beautiful. Yes. And because of those many words, Mr. Speaker, because of those many words, let me tell parents out there and the parents who are in there, all the time, tell your daughters that before you get a partner who could possibly marry you, a man must approach you sexually. So when he's approaching you sexually, it means he's harassing, it doesn't mean he's harassing you. He's trying his luck. It is up to you to say, no, I don't want. And it ends there. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, sir, I want to appeal to all of us, including the men, about these clerks you are seeing. S S Senator Boni Carol, there's a point of information from Senator Beatrice. <laughs> Do you, do, you, aye, aye. do you want to be thank you, speaker. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Bonnie, yeah. for allowing me to inform you yeah. that you needed to add, on yeah. top of the gracious women you have named, yes. just say they are people, they have beauty with brains. Beauty with brains. brains. Some of the beauties have no brain. That is the information I was. Aye. 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 I, Mr. Clark, Mr. Speaker, sir, Mr. Speaker, sir, I didn't know what was coming. I want to appeal to all of us, my colleagues, with maximum respect. These clerks who are seated here, it's just a question of making a decision. They can become senators. They can become MPs. They can become presidents. Let us stop looking down on them. After all, in my community, Honorable Wafula, he was a clerk here processing our visas and passports. Wafula became the member of parliament of Eldabes. In this house today, the member of parliament of Matungu in Kakamega, Honorable Peter Oscar Nabulindo, it was a clerk here. I want clerks to be free. I have just come from Finland and Estonia, and we were just the two of us. Clark, young Kavata, and myself. Supposing young Kavata then took to social media and said, when we were there, you let me say, Ali Jaribu Kufanya Kitu. Mr. Speaker, we have to discourage this. Finally, finally, this problem of name dropping on sexual grounds is extremely dangerous. When they were unable to contain Dr. Martin Luther King, the way some people in this parliament have been harassing Yegenye for years, when they were unable to contain Dr. Martin Luther King, they said that the great Senator moral Bonnie, leader... Where we are at the moment, let's avoid mentioning staff by their names, Other, especially staff. Thank Please you. avoid that. I, I said it again because his name is... You went with a staff member because, you know, it's not Th important. Th th thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, I'm guided, but I, I mentioned Nyakenye because his, report, his name is in the report. No, no, but I just no. wanted to say... Your wisdom should be able to guide you on those Thank you, things. thank you. You are almost an elder like me, almost. I wish you many years. Mr. Speaker, they almost destroyed Dr. Martin Luther King. When they failed, they shot him. Guys, ladies and gentlemen, 
honorable senators. There was a great child of Africa whose parents went to the U.S. as slaves. And the only thing the little boy knew was that he could box. And he became probably, arguably, the best boxer in the mega history of boxing. Mike Tyson was destroyed by an allegation of sex. Mr. Speaker, Mason Greenwood, one of the most talented teenagers in football from the Manchester United Football Academy, was almost destroyed because of a mere allegation of sex. And do you know what the lawyers told my Mason? They told him, go and marry that girl. The girl has a son with Greenwood. She is Greenwood's wife. Can I just conclude? I'll take it. She is Greenwood's wife, but busy bodies of gender and things, they keep on pushing until Greenwood is unable to kick a ball for a whole one year. Finally, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, finally, even the people people think are devils. I'm a private and confessed admirer of the courage and openness of former President Donald Trump. To destroy Donald Trump, they played the sex card. We have to stop this. Because, Mr. Speaker, sir, the word sex is in this report, that's why I'm using it. Mr. Speaker, sir, we have to stop it because without sex, none of us would be in this house. We are products of sex. So, Senator Boney, I can see Senator Boney. I can see you have been so I, 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 I accept you to be informed. I accept. Okay, now, what is your point of order, Senator Sige? Ah, wait, I was informing. Uh, I believe Senator Boni did not uh, desire to be informed. Otherwise, I think he should have. It is not uh, taken Mr. By Speaker, even. I rise password to standing order 10913. I have not spoken to this motion. And in the circumstances, pass one to that standing order, 10913. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, I, Mr. Speaker, I rose person to. I am yes. on your point of order but allow Senator Boni to finish. Yes. And maybe we have one or two more senators, and then we you, you list that issue. Boni Karoere, you have one one minute. Uh, Mr. Seconds. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to conclude by attempting to carry Senator Morangu with the rest of us. He has said this report should be rejected because five men signed. He has forgotten that on that committee there was the gracious Senator Shakila Abdallah. Shakila Abdallah. Uh, Senator Boni. Yes. Just go down your gears because you're almost concluding. Your time is over. I can see from you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I therefore support the committee's report because I believe that if we punish our child, it is in keeping with the age old phrase that spare the rod, spoil the child. I support. Thank you. Next is uh, Senator Mwinihaji Mohamed Faki.
Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to contribute to this uh, debate on the report of the Privileges, Powers and Privileges Committee of the House. Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> first of all, I want to state that uh, the House has its own rules, and we have to live by those rules. And after saying so, I've listened to the debate, and I want to propose an amendment to this report. I beg to move that the motion be amended by deleting the word full stop at the end of uh, the motion and inserting thereon the following. That A, subject to the amendments of the recommendations appearing on page 66 of the report, by deleting the words for the remainder of the second session of the 13th parliament, parliament appearing in paragraph 1 and substituting therefore, thereof, therefore the words until 31st of October 2023. Two, deleting the words, the remainder of the second session of the 13th Parliament appearing in paragraph 2 and inserting thereof the following words in place thereof for the duration referred to in paragraph 1. And uh, finally, number 3, deleting the words for the third session appearing in paragraph 3 and inserting thereof in November 2023. In essence, I'm moving that the report be amended and that the suspension be for the period uh, uh, from today, if the motion is carried, up to 31st of October 2023. Bearing in mind that she's a first offender, and even in our courts of law, first offenders are treated leniently. And we have had a lot of contributions, contributions from many members saying that the punishment that has been proposed in the, in the report is a bit excessive in view of the fact that she's a first offender, although the other reason that she's a lady is not very serious because we know even ladies uh, commit serious crimes in this, in this world. So, Mr. Speaker, sir, I beg to move that uh, the report be amended in those terms. And I invite Senator Muma to second the amendment. Thank you. Senator Catherine Muma. Do you want somebody else to second? Um, uh, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> I, I oppose. Honda Senators, Honda Senators, Honda Senators, the effect of uh, that amendment. Since uh, we did not get a seconder, so the amendment is dropped. It cannot carry it. So we proceed. So now I can take, I can now take the the, the, the point of honor from Wakiri Sigei. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And thank you for once again giving me the opportunity to rise. First one to uh, the standing order number 109, 1 and 3. And Mr. Speaker, I rise to propose that the mover be now called upon to reply. Sorry, you know I want uh, a second so that I can move the question. On this, eh? 
No, no. Senator Wakiri, that's okay. Now I want to put the question that the mover be now called upon to reply. As, as many of the same opinion say aye. Aye. As many as of the contrary opinion say nay. Yes. There is of it. So mover. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Uh, I first want to thank the members for their contribution, for those who are for the report and those who are against. I really thank you all for your contributions. Mr. Speaker, I want to start by saying that me as a person of the committee, we have nothing against the member who we are deliberating about her issues today. Our concern are the issues which have been brought to this house and that is why we are here today to deliberate those issues so that we put to a stop to any member who would go the same way. Mr. Speaker, as a Senate, this house needs to be respected, it needs to be protected. And that is why we have this power and privilege committee to take care of all the disciplinary actions against any members who go against their laws and the, and the rules of the House. Mr. Speaker, we have to know that we are all here temporarily. We are here as one. We are not here to fight. We are here to work and serve this country. And we would meet anywhere at any point at any day after we leave this House. So, Mr. Speaker, it is very important and imperative that we keep respect to each other and we keep and we carry ourselves with decorum and integrity. Mr. Speaker, if anybody has any problem or a member has any issue with anybody, there are channels to be followed for one to get justice but to go abusing the members, the staff, it is not the right channel for a honorable member to do when you are in this house. You are supposed to be an example to others who are here and outside. Mr. Speaker, seduction, or if one is seduced, is not a crime. Because as a woman, if you are seduced, it means you are attractive and beautiful. And if you are not seduced, you should ask yourself, what is your problem? So for somebody to be seduced, it's not a crime. It is a normal and a natural thing. Mr. Speaker, we are here as only 67 members out of 50 million Kenyans. And that is not a coincidence. We are all here with dif for different reasons. Some of us are elected and some are specially elected. So Mr. Speaker, if you have that opportunity to be here, you should carry yourself with respect and decorum and maintain the integrity of this house and of you as a person. Mr. Speaker, a lot has been said. I really want to take this opportunity to apologize to the clerk for what he has been put through and to say sorry on behalf of the Senate. Mr. Speaker, with those few remarks, I want us as a whole to pass this report. Please put the question. I thank you all. Thank you very much. Senators. Senator Mutinda and the Chair Budget. Honorable Senators, we have come to the end of that debate and uh, I want to determine that uh, this matter does not affect the counties. Therefore, I want to put the question that Honorable Senators, I now put the question that the Senate and opts the report of the Committee of Powers and Privileges on the inquiry on its own motion into conduct of Senator Gloria Oroba MP 
and to establish if the conduct constituted breach of parliamentary privilege laid on the table of the Senate on Wednesday, 9th August 2023. Will as many as of that opinion say aye? Aye. Will as many as of a contrary opinion say nay? Nay. The eyes have it. Next order, next order. Senator Wakiri Sigei approach the chair kindly. Order number nine, motion. Consideration of the nominee for appointment as the chairperson of the board of directors of the Central Bank of Kenya. Okay. Vice Chair, Standing Committee on Finance and Budget, Senator Mutinda. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I do rise to, on a notice of motion uh, for the consider. I do beg to move, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you. Mr. Speaker, I do beg to move that the Senate uh, adopts the joint report of the Departmental Committee on Finance and National Planning uh, of the National Assembly and uh, of the Standing Committee on Finance and Budget of the Senate on the vetting of Mr. Andrew Mukite Musangi for appointment as the chairperson of the Board of Directors of the Central Bank of Kenya, which was laid on the table of the Senate on Tuesday 19th and that passed on to Section uh, 11.2a of the Central Bank of Kenya Act and Section 8.1 of the Public Appointments uh, Parliamentary Approval Act uh, 2011, the Senate approves the appointment of Mr. Andrew Mokite Mosangi to the position of Chairperson of the Board of Central Bank of Kenya. Mr. Speaker, as a committee, and I sit in this committee as the Vice Chair of Finance and Budget. And uh, we were able to sit with our counterparts, our colleagues from the National Assembly, uh, on the Committee of uh, uh, Finance and National Planning, to be able to do a joint vetting uh, of none other than Mr. Andrew Musangi. And uh, this was as guided by the uh, employment and uh, regulations within the act. Mr. Musangi was able to appear before the committee and uh, Mr. Musangi was uh, accompanied by a very a vast curriculum vitae for himself. Mr. Musangi holds a bachelor's degree, uh, Mr. Speaker, in the University of Al, which is a law degree. Further to that, Mr. Musangi also holds a postgraduate in law from, uh, in law from the Kenya School of Law. And uh, he was able to exhibit an experience of over 28 years, both in the corporate sector from the uh, different banking uh, uh, sectors to different law firms uh, in this country. In his CV, it, it was clearly indicating his different roles as director, as appropriator, as a chairperson. And during our vetting process, members were very keen to be able to get to understand how he's going to undertake his roles as the chairperson of CBK. This was very keen because Mr. Speaker, putting in mind uh, what our committee uh, entails and what it partakes, and also putting in mind where we are as a country in terms of matters debt, in terms of the rate for the dollar. So the committee was very keen and was very robust in uh, thoroughly vetting Mr. Musangi, and we were able to get very convincing uh, uh, feedbacks ranging from the strategies that is going to be able to put in place 
to ensure that uh, improves the policies that are needed to be implemented as guided by the different uh, uh, guiding uh, sections of the law so that so as, so as to be able to improve uh, the, the policies that are set. Mr. Speaker, we were able to uh, ask and question Mr. Musangi in regards to what time he's going to put into this uh, new role. Uh, putting in mind that he's in his CV, he had been able to state that he's still uh, a director with his private farms and different uh, companies. And uh, he was able to clearly communicate to the committee that he has been able to delegate the same roles to his different management teams in the different farms and is ready and uh, willing to ensure that he puts the required time of uh, the work that ent is entailed in his uh, role as the chair of uh, Central Bank. Uh, at the same time, Mr. Speaker, as you know, I've been very passionate and concerned about the fraudulent bank withdrawals in this country. I had a great opportunity in this platform, Mr. Speaker, during this vetting period, and I was able to ask uh, the incoming chair if he is aware of these uh, cases, and if so, then what will be his strategy? And uh, I'm happy, Mr. Speaker, to say that uh, he was able to clearly state actually his uh, parent had been a victim of fraudulent withdrawal from the bank. And it's a matter that he's going to prioritize when he settles in, in office. And I was uh, very impressed with that uh, particular feedback. Questions ranged from the issues of cryptocurrency in this country, his views uh, in terms of what he, he sees and what uh, he thinks about cryptocurrency, he was able to bring out. We, we dealt also on his worth uh, as, a, as, a, as a business person, as a person, and he was able to honestly and clearly indicate that he was worth uh, about $1.1 billion. And this is someone who has uh, done his own investments, and it really came out that uh, he's much more focused on ensuring that he's going to put his skills and his required time to be able to improve on the policies at CBK. He was able also, Mr. Speaker, to really bring out uh, the issues uh, of um, good governance and good leadership as we uh, went down during this vetting process, and they really came out very, very well uh, from Mr. Mosangi. Mr. Musangi also having uh, uh, been um, in different organizations, he's uh, averse with the different cultural uh, within uh, uh, this country and is able to interact and work well with different groups from different uh, uh, dynamic cultures and regions in this country, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I do uh, also note that uh, there was so much commitment from both uh, sides from National Assembly, which I will take this opportunity to highly thank the colleagues from the National Assembly um, on their commitment on how we walked uh, this vetting process to the point that we did the reporting. Of course, Mr. Speaker, as I've always stood here, I've really appreciated the Secretariat. And I want really to also take this opportunity to appreciate the finance, both houses, the secretariat team for the National Assembly, of course, and for the Senate on the vast and robust uh, work that they were able to do uh, during this particular process and the reporting. It was very well, well put. I can't, Mr. F uh, Speaker, forget to thank my colleagues, led by none other than uh, Senator, Governor, Captain, Honorable Ali Roba who has led this committee very well, who have had a very great opportunity uh, to be able to serve as his vice chair. And I'm very proud of him because he's really given me a lot of guidance. He's given me a lot of support that I really appreciate. I can't forget the other senators. We have Senator A.D., we have Senator Faki. We have also the leader, one of the greatest leaders. We have none other than Senator Boni Halwale. We have Senator Shakila. Joyce Carril, Senator um, 
uh, Tabitha Karanja and uh, Senator Onyonka, who have been very supportive during this process. We've worked uh, uh, this uh, journey together as a committee, and I really, really uh, so much appreciate the efforts uh, that as colleagues they put to ensure we as execute the business of this uh, uh, committee, putting in mind that our business is normally timelined business. And so we really have to go out of our way to ensure we do timely uh, uh, bills, timely uh, uh, approvals like this that you, that you see. Previously, we had an opportunity to vet the deputy um, governor that is madam susan and a process that we executed uh, so well for me it has been quite a very good learning process that uh, uh, make, uh, has made me be able to learn a lot during this uh, processes as required all said about uh, the candidate uh, he's a very qualified candidate he's up to task he's able to deliver he's able to uh, uh, d uh, set the time that is required and uh, i'm very confident that uh, he's going to deliver and i really want to thank the president for nominating uh, mr andrew musangi for this position he's is a, a calm person who knows uh, what he's supposed to be doing so i want to wish him the best and uh, hope that we are going to uh, have many much more achievables as we move forward. At this time, Mr. Speaker, I beg to move, and I do request that uh, Senator Boni Halwale seconds this motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Boni. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair, for giving me the opportunity to second your motion. Mr. Speaker, sir, Andrew Mokite Musangi is one of the children of this country who truly is living the Kenyan dream. He's a boy who took himself to Alliance High School, went to university in the UK, came back, established his own law firm, was not employed by anybody, and Mr. Speaker, he succeeded. The young man has spoken to integrity. He's saying, I'm a billionaire, but I can explain where my wealth came from. Behind some of these so-called rich Kenyans, there is a story of corruption behind them, speaking to the offices they held in the public service. But he is a young man using his own law practice using his uh, business acumen and prowess, he's been able to grow into a billionaire. He can take care of our money. My last point, as I second this motion, Mr. Speaker, is to thank the President for giving Mr. Andrew Mukite Musangi an opportunity to be the Chairman of the Central Bank of Kenya. I equally want to thank members of the National Assembly when this motion for approval went before them, they unanimously allowed Andrew to become our chairman. A word of, of advice to Andrew. You're going into Central Bank when the shilling is dropping every day. You have to do something. You are going to Central Bank when, Mr. Speaker, the Dilaru company that was printing Kenya currency has suspended its operations. You have to do something because we have to continue printing currency. Mr. Andrew, you're going to, to the Central Bank of Kenya when now we are entering into the new era of digital transactions. And because we have a lot of whiz gits that are bound from Alliance High School where you are, we have a lot of brilliant little children from the University of Nairobi. You have to forever remain alert and protect us because these whiz gits can blow people's accounts. I know my good friend and my vice chair had her account blown up. 
That's why she'll never miss an opportunity to insist that our accounts must be protected. With those many remarks, I second the motion as moved. Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, Honorable Senators, I now propose the question that the Senate adopts the joint report of the Departmental Committee on Finance and National Planning of the National Assembly and the Standing Committee of Finance and Budget of the Senate on the vetting of Mr. Andrew Mukite Musangi for appointment as the chairperson of the Board of Directors of the Central Bank of Kenya laid on the table of the Senate on Tuesday, 19th September, 2023, and that pass one to section 11 subsection 2a of the central bank of kenya act and section 8 subsection 1 of the public appointments parliamentary approval act 2011 the senate approves the appointment of mr andrew mukite musangi to the position of chairperson of the board of the central bank of kenya uh, honorable members i can see there is a lot of interest on members who seek to contribute to this uh, particular motion and I would like to call upon uh, members um, Senator Karungo Thangwa Paul Thank you very much uh, Mr. Speaker for this great opportunity to support uh, this report to have a chairman of Central Bank of Kenya, Mr. Andrew Musangi. Mr. Speaker, I know the chairman comes at a time where the country is asking itself which way to go when it comes to cryptocurrency. According to the report, Mr. Speaker, the chairman was not very clear when it comes to cryptocurrency. He did not support it 100%. Neither did he oppose it 100%. Mr. Speaker, we are talking about inflation. And I believe one of the contributors of inflation is probably cryptocurrency. Because over 6.1 million Kenyans own a crypto in the crypto world. That is dollars, money Kenyans have invested online. Mr. Speaker, if you continue to shy away from cryptocurrency, it's going to look like a black market. And Kenyans will be hiding their money or saving their money in the cryptocurrency, awaiting to get a few more extra cryptos. Uh, so that, because it is something that um, uh, they used to earn money. Mr. Speaker, I am a believer of cryptocurrency. I actually own a few coins because I want to understand it. Mr. Speaker, some people call crypto scam. If you think crypto is a scam, start yours. It is just a technology of blockchain, Mr. Speaker. You know, there are two countries in the world that use Bitcoin or cryptocurrency as their legal tender. That is the El Salvador and the Central African Republic, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Central Bank of Kenya should send a, dele a delegation to those countries to go and understand how a country like El Salvador has allowed Bitcoin to be their legal tender. How a country like the uh, uh, Central African uh, Republic uses legal tender, Bitcoin as a legal tender. Instead of fighting cryptocurrency in this country, let's regularize it, Mr. Speaker. Let's have the CMO, Capital Markets Authority, the Central Bank of Kenya, and anybody who is doing uh, uh, the stock brokers that we do have. Because crypto is just like shares, Mr. Speaker. It's only that they happen online. I don't know whether you know, if I tell you this, Mr. Speaker, and PESA is like crypto. Because it is digital money passing through electronic to another electronic. Bonga points, they are like tokens, Mr. Speaker. That is a crypto that can uh, be used or it is accepted by the Kenyans. That's why we buy things using bonga points. Mr. Speaker, we buy token, electricity, our power tokens on our phones and we get some digital and we feed them somewhere and it becomes power. Mr. Speaker, that is the technology that is behind a cryptocurrency. Mr. Speaker, I believe 
after this this Senate should invite uh, the the gentleman we are just about uh, to approve here, Andrew Musangi, as a chairperson. We should also invite the governor of Central Bank to come and give a very, very well researched and written report on what they think about cryptocurrency, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this country raises money from the public through bonds, treasury bonds. Mr. Speaker, it is a manual experience. But if we were to go the blockchain way, the cryptocurrency way, even a watch money in India can send some money to our treasury bonds so that we fund our government projects. And of course, we fund the money back once the value of that token or that crypto uh, goes up, Mr. Speaker. I think I use this opportunity to tell Mr. Musangi you can revolutionize the way we handle currency in this country if you are to allow cryptocurrency in order every youth. Mr. Speaker, look what happened at KICC. Over almost 2 million young people came out to have their eyeballs scanned because of a cryptocurrency called WorldCoin. Instead of fighting cryptocurrency, let's embrace it. Because our youth believe in that, let's let us use it so that we can raise money to do projects. And of course, let our youth trade in cryptocurrency. They do understand that. They make a living. And I want to tell you here and now, Mr. Speaker, as I conclude, in the year 20,000 during Corona, because that is the time I took uh, enough time to study, to read about blockchain, about crypto. I made a few coins from it, Mr. Speaker. And my family and my friends could not go hungry for those who did it. So it is working. So Central Bank, the Treasury, it is a high time we embrace cryptocurrency so that we stop losing money through a black market, through online channels and exchanges where we have put our money in there are waiting for it uh, to get some interest. So with those few remarks, Mr. Speaker, I say I do support uh, this um, report. And finally, as I conclude, Mr. Speaker, we need to do research. We need to do research on our currency, Mr. Speaker. I think we just print our currency and we do not probably follow what other countries are doing, Mr. Speaker. I know this is controversial, but in America, they say America owes itself over 34, I think, trillion uh, dollars. But it owes itself, the government owes itself that money. How do they owe themselves that money? It's because they print more money and then they uh, uh, calculate that as a debt which they are supposed to collect and probably ban or remove it from the reserve, Mr. Speaker. Even Kenya, we can go that direction to spur development. Look at Thika Road, look at uh, uh, the, the bypasses, the one in Ruiru uh, from the airport all the way to Ruaka. That road has created jobs. So if that road was done through that kind of it's called deficit. Uh, 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 um, it's called deficit uh, balances, Mr. Speaker. So that if it can spark growth, the government can, of course, borrow from uh, itself Senator through printing. Kankangwa, uh, you still have got uh, 12 more minutes to conclude on your contribution when this motion uh, resumes uh, in the floor of the house. And now, honorable members. It is now 6.30 p.m. time to adjourn the Senate. The Senate therefore stands adjourned until tomorrow, Thursday, 21st September 2023 at 2.30 p.m.